Our speaker this morning is Daryl Pace. Daryl joined Toastmasters in 2013, and he has achieved advanced communicator gold under the Legacy Program. Daryl says that when the old program went away, he felt lost, but now he is thankful that Toastmasters has provided a path way forward. Pathway, pathway. Yeah, I know, it was a stretch, but I liked it. Um, earlier this year, Daryl competed in the International Speech Contest and he made it to the finals, which puts him in the top eight speakers out of 35,000 contestants. Incredible, incredible. What was his journey there? I'd like to know. I'm sure one of you guys or two of you guys, maybe all you guys want to know. He's going to share that with us now. Please help me, my, please help me welcome my friend, Daryl Pace, with his speech entitled Six Steps to the World Stage. Take it away, Daryl. I appreciate it, Kurt, and thank you so much, fellow Toastmasters. Last week, Kristen sent me an email. The email said, hey, Daryl, will you tell how you got to the World Championship at the District Summit? I said, sure. How long does the speech need to be? Kristen <clears throat> said, not long, no more than 20 to 30 minutes. I said, okay, cool. I thought, 20 to 30 minutes, short to me, is four to six minutes, maybe five to seven. But after I'd calmed down a little bit, I thought, hmm, what could I share with my fellow Toastmasters that would be of interest to them and that would be valuable in some way? I came up with six steps to the world championship. We can use these steps in anything we do in Toastmasters to get to that next level. We can use them outside of Toastmasters as well. Before doing that though, let's do an audience participation exercise. The exercise is this. I would like it if you would repeat the word reps three times after I give you a cue. Now the cue is going to be this. After I give the cue, I want you to say reps, reps, reps. I'll demonstrate. Reps, reps, reps. And I want you to say it out loud on mute, but out loud. Let's practice. Ready? Reps, 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 reps. reps, reps. reps. Awesome. Let's do it one more time. Reps, 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 reps. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Tuck that into your mental file folder. We're going to come back to it shortly. About two years ago, when I was 16, actually, <laughs> I was going to look to see if anybody caught that. Probably some of you are thinking, man, that's a rough looking 16 year old or six, rough looking 18 year old. But many, many, many years ago, when I was 16, my dad came to me and he said, Daryl, come take a ride with me. It was late in the afternoon. He took me to what appeared to my young eyes to be a a business meeting of some sort. I remember my dad got up and spoke. And have you ever heard the Maya Angelou quote that says, people will forget what you say, people will forget what you do, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Have any of you heard that? Yes. I remember sitting in the back feeling like I was in imminent danger being called on to speak. I was thinking, please get me out of here without having to speak. Please don't call on me to speak. Because back then, I was afraid, I was very shy, I was afraid to speak to one person, much less a group. But as fate would have it in that meeting, I got out of there without having to speak. And I was thankful. Fast forward seven years in the future, I'm a young man, and my shyness is not, it's not doing me any favors at work. And it's really affecting the area that was most important to me at that time. And that was with the ladies. Well, I'm looking for a solution to this problem, this conundrum. And I take the Dale Carnegie course and that gives me kind of a little temporary booster shot of confidence. I was able to talk to a young lady who became my wife, Teresa. She's a wife and now fellow Toastmaster, by the way. Teresa, years after that, my confidence started coming down again, and I, I was looking for a solution still. 
And I thought, what was that group that my dad took me to? Master, Toast, Toastmaster, Toastmasters. In Atlanta, Georgia, I became a member of the Dogwood Toastmasters. I remember two things about the Dogwood Toastmasters. One, I used to get there late regularly so I could miss table topics, which terrified me. The second thing I remember from the Dogwood Toastmasters was one of the members there, Kathy Fite. Kathy came to me one day and she said, Daryl, you should enter the speech contest. I said, you think so? She said, yeah. I said, huh, okay. And I thought, I'm not doing that. And I didn't. Well, I remained a member for a couple of years, dropped out of Dogwood Toastmasters. We moved from Atlanta, Georgia to Nashville, Tennessee, and I joined the Franklin Toastmasters, which I'm a member of today. That was in 2013. After I had been a member of Franklin for about a year, a member, a former member, Deborah Poland, she came to me and she said, Daryl, you should enter the speech contest. And Deborah was a very, she had a very commanding presence. So Daryl, you should enter the speech contest. I said, <laughs> she said, no, seriously. I said, oh, okay. And I did. I mentioned Deborah. I mentioned Kathy because if there have ever been a couple of independent sources or friends who have told you that you might be good at something or that you might have a talent, that might be something to look into. Entering the speech contest has been one of the most enriching experiences of my adult life. And it happened because of those two friends of mine. So I entered the contest and when I entered the contest, I think, man, since I'm in a contest, I need to learn how to speak. And I ruffle through my competent communicators manual and I buy a book. The book was this one, Magic of Public Speaking by Andrei Sedniev. And in this book, Andrei says that the secret to telling a good speech is to tell a story, then make a point. And that was his formula for a good speech, tell a story, make a point. I decided, okay, I'm going to do a speech about my youngest daughter and her struggles to create this rubber band bracelet. And I did that speech. I tell that story and it took me to the district, made it to the district, got runner up at the district to a fantastic speaker who's still a Toastmaster today. This was 2014, by the way, Jared Throneberry was the, the winner that year. And I remember being in the audience and Jared doing his thing and his, his final line was something like this. Do these make my butt look big? And he twisted and he put his butt out there and the crowd goes, ah, ha, ha, ha. the crowd's saying, you know, just going crazy. And I think, well, I didn't win that one. But it was a great run. I enjoyed that run. I enjoyed it so much that I thought, man, the speech contest thing, I'm, I'm going to do this again. And I thought, I thought I did pretty well. I, I thought, this is it's kind of a piece of cake. I'm going to get this thing done here next year. The next year in 2015, I entered with a speech called Use the Tool in Your Hands. And the tool was your speaking ability, that speaking ability that Toastmasters gives you, using that in your everyday life. Have any of you heard of this speech, Use the Tool in Your Hand? I didn't think so, and there's a good reason for that. We'll go over that right now. Okay. I'm thinking this thing's a piece of cake. I go to the contest at the area level, and I end the contest with an admonition. Use the tool in your hand. And the crowd goes, yeah. And I'm walking back to my seat, and I fix eyes on one of my fellow Toastmasters, and I go, yeah, got this thing. I sit down, and the contest chair says, Second runner up, Daryl Pace. I think, what? Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. The, the winner was, I mean, he's an excellent speaker. I, there's no shame in coming second place to him. And then I read my certificate closely. It wasn't second place, it was second runner up. I was third place out of three contestants. 
Then it hit me. The speech contest is not a piece of cake. It also hit me that don't, well, one, to take your craft seriously. When you're into this thing, take your craft seriously. And this is step number two. Stay humble, or you might take a tumble. Or put another way, don't get cocky, or your road can get rocky. Or put another way, don't think you know it all, or you might trip and fall. Or put another way, if you think you're bad, and this is the cool kind of bad, like Michael Jackson used to, used to sing about, if you think you're bad, life can make you sad. I'm looking out here to see if there are any smiles. See, I told my wife that yesterday, and she said, Daryl's too corny, it won't work. I think maybe she was right. Okay, lesson number two, stay humble, work on your craft. I take off from the contest a couple of years, come back in 2018, and I do a speech called Do Your Dance. I put a lot of effort into Do Your Dance, and Doing Your Dance was about you putting your unique self out there. To end that speech, I said something like, no one has your combination of genetics, experiences, and knowledge. You are absolutely unique and meant to do something special. But to do that, you've got to do your dance. So whether your dance is kind of awkward, like that Elaine from Seinfeld dance, or if it's kind of quirky, like that Carlton dance on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Or if it's smooth and cool, like the dance steps of Justin Timberlake, which I won't try. Do your dance. And I can't wait to see you on life's dance floor. I ended and the crowd went, yeah. And I sat down in the contest chair said second place and second place at the district and I thought that's great fantastic I had a great run but you know when you put your heart into something and you don't get the result you want it stings a little right so I that contest was in Knoxville Tennessee I go to my parents house my parents live in Knoxville I'm sitting at the kitchen table with my dad and I say, Dad, what did you, what'd you think about my speech? He said, Daryl, I thought you did a fantastic job. He says, now tell me, are you serious about this thing, this contest thing? I said, yeah. He said, well, there's one thing you have to do. Okay, what's that? Double down, Daryl, double down. That's lesson number three, step number three. When you're working toward your goal, your dream, you will hit some bumps along the way. When that happens, double down. The next year I came back with a talk called Shomoto. This was in 2019. I tested it out at Kurt's, Kurt's group, came back that year, at the area, was getting some good feedback on that talk and was giving it at the area and it was rocking and the crowd was great and the crowd was into it. And I got to the part where I said, have you ever had a fear that held you back? How did you handle it? I ran from mine and it caused me to miss out. Pool parties, no. Barefoot walks on the beach, pff, don't even think about it. Open-toed sandals, only with socks on. These toes, these toes, these toes. And I froze up at the area, combined area competition, areas 41, 42, 40, 41, 42. Couldn't remember the next word, stood there in front of the crowd for over three silent, excruciating, minutes. That one hurt. I went home. 
talked to my wife, and I did something I haven't done since, and I rarely do. I cried. My wife said, Daryl, you're going to be a speaker, right? I said, yeah. She said, get back on the horse. Okay. I went to my fellow Toastmasters, the Brentwood Early Risers, went there that next meeting. It was on a Saturday. That contest was on a Thursday. And I spoke there. And they gave me a standing ovation and they told me that everything was good and it made me feel so much better. Which leads to step number four. When things really get rough, rely on your support team. My support team are my fellow Toastmasters, including my wife, and my clubs. They helped to pick me up when things were down. And another Toastmaster, after that meeting, his name was Matt. Matt says, hey, man, I'm proud of the way you handle yourself. If that had been me, I would have run out of the room crying. But remember, character isn't formed in your successes. It's forced in your failures. And I saw Kurt later that year, and he said, Daryl, you got to be rock solid now. It doesn't get any worse than that, right? Only one way you can go from there, and that's up. I appreciate Matt's encouragement. Next year, the contest was 2020. I did a speech called Gold, and Gold was about that debacle. So the formula for me and gold, I heard this from the speaking professionals, uh, from, from some of the other world champions. They said, speak about your first, your flaws, your frustrations, your failures. That's where your best speech material comes from. I thought, okay, well, the contest was def definitely the first time that happened. It was definitely frustrating. It was absolutely a failure. And uh, uh, whatever the other one was, it was that too. So that formula worked for me. That finally got me past the district, that speech. And by the way, reps, 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 all right? <laughs> all right, so step number five, find the formula that works for you. For me, it was using that speech content from flaws, frustrations, failures, and firsts. Find the formula that works for you. Which leads to this year, the World Championship. Shomoto makes a reappearance. That's where my flaw, my perceived flaw, became my friend. My big toe. A couple of things there. One, do you have anything that you think is a flaw, that you perceive as a flaw? That might just be a quality that helps you resonate with others. It might just be a quality that helps you resonate with others. Also, it was very difficult for me initially to show my toe. I started showing my toe about five years ago, I started doing it because I wanted to speak about coming or overcoming that, that hesitation, that fear. So as part of Toastmasters, it helped me to overcome the fear of showing my toe. That was a push or a stretch of the comfort zone, which is step number six. Push and stretch your comfort zone. And if you do that enough, what was once uncomfortable becomes comfortable. That's step six. So to recap, and before I recap, reps, reps, reps. All right. Recap, step, more, step number one, find your talent and others might help you there. Step number two, stay humble, work on your craft. Step number three, if things get bumpy, double down. Step number four, if things really go off the rails, fall back on your support team. 
your family, your friends. Step number five, find the formula that works for you. The formula that worked for me was speaking about first flaws, frustrations, and failures. Step number six, push, stretch your comfort zone, and then do those things over and over and over again. Now, you might wonder why I had you do the reps, reps, reps exercise. And it's this. When I was a teenager, I wanted to be a professional bodybuilder. And I lifted weights. And of course, bodybuilders, when they lift weights, they will lift the weight for a certain number of repetitions. They'll set it down, rest, and then repeat the process. Bodybuilders don't call their repetitions by the long name, by repetitions. They say, we're lifting this weight a certain number of reps. And of course, as you lift a weight continuously, the reps become more difficult. And if you continue going, your muscle starts to burn. It hurts. One of my heroes back then was Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Arnold said this about reps. The last three or four reps, they're the ones that make your muscle grow. They make your muscle grow. Those reps, that area of pain, creates the champion. So it's the reps that make the bodybuilder grow. It's the reps that make them stronger. It's the reps that if they can put up with the pain, make that body or potentially can make that bodybuilder a champion. Arnold, after he became one of the greatest bodybuilders ever, successful business person, global movie star, was asked, how to most quickly get to success. Arnold said, there are no shortcuts, no shortcuts. Everything is reps, reps, reps. A couple of years ago, here in Nashville, I attended a, a meeting with a group called the Nashville Association of Information Technology Professionals, NAITP. When I went there, the meeting started with some networking. We talked and just made small talk. Then we sat down for dinner and a speaker spoke. When I was sitting in the back, I was thinking, man, I'd like to speak to this group. In fact, I was thinking, please let me speak to this group. Please let me speak to this group. After the meeting was over, I went to the organizer and said, hey, do you need extra speakers? He said, yes. And I wound up speaking there. If you recall, many years ago, I had trouble speaking to one person, much less a group. What made the difference? What made the difference between that and this? How did I get to the world stage? Following those six principles and doing them over and over and over again. Reps, reps, reps. I said all this stuff to come to this one question. What is your goal? What is your dream in Toastmasters and beyond? Is it to become a great evaluator? Is it to become a great speaker? Is it to, to mentor the next generation of Toastmasters? Whatever it is, remember that what makes you stronger are the reps. What builds you are the reps. And when those rocky times come, if you can put up with the pain, if it is your aim, what can make you a champion are the reps. I'm going to leave it with this. Reps, reps, reps. Back to you, Kurt. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak and get in another rep. You're, <laughs> you're very welcome. It was our privilege to be able to listen to you today, Daryl. That's really, really great stuff. Uh, let me ask you a couple of quick questions, if I may. Do you uh, do any writing? Do you have a blog? Have you written any books? Because there seems to be a lot of good information here that we could get out to our friends who are not Toastmaster members. I am starting a blog. I will send that information out, I'd say within a week or so. And I'm 
I'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'll sync up with Kristen to get that information to the district. That would be awesome. Cause I think, you know, you're, you're talking about the, the six steps here and then your other stuff, your, your flaws, frustrations, failures, and first, that's great places to get speech material, right? Cause we're always looking, we're always like, what are we going to talk about? So I think it's a, a great, just a lot of good information in that one speech. Um, and then my final question for you is, uh, what did FedEx Kinko say when you went to go pick up that poster of your toe? Well, <laughs> so I'm glad you asked that question, Kurt. Are you? I, 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 well, okay. <laughs> I ordered this banner. I can't remember the name of the company. And I sent in the order and I was corresponding with one of the people through email. I think I spoke with someone as well. And people don't want to say, hey, you know, this is kind of a weird thing or whatever. <laughs> And the initial, the initial copies were kind of blurry. And the, I just remember the lady saying, well, you know, um, we, we can see the carpet and then there's the, um, uh, the image. She, she, won't say, she wouldn't say, you know, that your toe or whatever. So anyway, that was an interesting experience. It was, uh, it was good. It was good. I love it. I love it. There's another five to seven minutes right there. Thank you. Let's <laughs> give it up again for Daryl Pace, everybody. Thank you very, very much, sir. Always a pleasure to hear you speak. We are moving along on time. We're gonna move on to the President's Distinguished Roundtable, where we're gonna ask some amazing people some hard questions. And our point here is to try to glean some information off of their experience, things that we can learn from and understand, and then disseminate out to our friends and our clubs and our, our other directors. And to lead the Distinguished Roundtable discussion, I'm going to give it over to Kristen Phillips, who is going to be in charge of this next segment. Please help me welcome Kristen Phillips. Thank you so much, Curtis. I am super excited about doing this President's Distinguished Roundtable. We had, last year in the district, nine clubs who made Presidents Distinguished. That doesn't include Select Distinguished or Actual Distinguished. And what I did a few weeks ago is I reached out to the presidents and VPEs of each one of these clubs and asked each one of them if they wouldn't mind coming out and being on this round table and sitting with us and discussing, how did you get to where you were? I mean, we had specific pointed questions because let's face it, club struggle and especially since March of last year, we've had a tremendous amount of struggle with clubs going offline and not meeting in person to going and meeting in Zoom. And then we've got corporate clubs who have just kind of gone by the wayside because they no longer meet at all. So I reached out to everybody and I had so many people step up. So first of all, what I wanna do is I want to introduce all of the panelists. And then what I'm going to do, I've got eight specific questions. Get ready, get ready with your notebooks, get ready to write down some answers to some really great questions. And as I ask the question, then I'm going to introduce or I'm going to ask the first, second, and third speaker, or it depends on how many speakers have stepped up for that particular question to answer the question. So first of all, let me introduce our panelists. We have Becky Beggerly with Metroplex Motivators, Laura Barker, Pellissippi, Maureen Merritt, Wednesday Orators, Dory Nolan, if she can answer the question, Carpet View. Sonia Van Hook, Wolf Hills. Stephen Shook, I'm not sure if he's on or not today. I did not see him. Oh, okay, <laughs> you're yeah, waving, I see. <laughs> he said HBTM, I don't, I don't know what that means. Stephen Shook, Carpet View. Kurt Menser, Thoroughbred Toastmasters. Ed Zinkowitz, Carpet View. Let me see who else I've got down here. I have got Daryl Pace, Franklin Toastmasters, Shana Teasdale, TGL Toastmasters, Jane Knight, The Morning Cup, Laura Barker again, Pellissippi, John, Grids John Grigsby, excuse me, Pellissippi, Marianne Queen, James K. Polk, and I've got Cynthia Vaughn. Is Cynthia on today? I'm not sure if she is. If you are, then, then put your little raise hand thing so you pop up to the very top. I am not sure if she's on today or not. Okay, I do not see her here. 
Well, thank you everybody again. And we are going to start with the president's roundtable. I'm going to put Becky Beggarly on the spot. She is my number one person. I have three, I have three people that are going to answer question number one. Becky Beggarly, Maureen Merritt, and Laura Barker. Becky, question number one. What did, and this is super important, what did your team do to combat Zoom fatigue for your members who are on video calls most of the day? Thanks, Kristen. I appreciate that question. And I have to say that number one, you have to give quality meetings and give them something to do and have fun for that hour so that they want to come to your meeting as opposed to the ones they have to go to. We try to make our meeting for that one hour a rest stop for the day. And we do that with a lot of themes that are not something that you would just pick out. For example, we've done a baseball theme meeting that pulls in the folks that love the baseball. We've done a meeting of, I'd like to thank the Academy, table topics. And everyone has to give an award and things like that or respond with an award. We've invited people from other clubs with fresh ideas, such as fractured table topics from Teresa Dunbar and the Parthenon Club to bring in a fresh and new approach. Because if your folks are not going to have fun in your meeting while they learn, they will not make it a point to get to just another online meeting. They're gonna take that lunch. They're gonna get out. They're gonna get away from that screen. But we give them something to want to be there for, and then they'll come and get a little bit of a rest period while they are participating in some fun things. Excellent, excellent answer. Thank you so much, Becky. Our second panelist who I would like to ask the same question to is Laura Barker from Pellissippi. Laura, what did your team do to combat this Zoom fatigue for your members who are on video calls most of the day? You know, I, I wish I could say like, uh, Becky, that we were as organized as, as they were. We were not. What I would say is that we were committed as a club to having fun and keeping it fun. So every meeting, we had a consistent core group of people who, who were always there that you could count on every time to be there and to bring it. And when I say bring it, I mean bring the lightheartedness, bring the, the levity, because as COVID hit and we were faced with continue as a club online or not, uh, under John Grigsby's tutelage at that time, and then I became president later, um, John made the smart decision that we would not miss a meeting. We, we did not miss a beat from in-person to online when our um, in-person venue shut down. And it took us a little bit of stumbling and bumbling, but the commitment to fun, the commitment to being there every week was something that, that we all decided as a core group to, to make it happen. And we were able to do that really and be able to keep the commitment going as Zoom fatigue did begin to set in later on, but it was that commitment to levity, to lightheartedness, I think, that allowed us to keep that, uh, to keep the meeting going, to keep the club going. Excellent answer. Thank you so much, Laura. Okay, our next panelist, and Dean, I did see your question in the chat, and we will definitely get to that question because that is very crucial, I believe. Our next panelist with the same question is Maureen Merritt with Wednesday Orators. What did your team do to combat Zoom fatigue since everybody is on Zoom most of the day? Well, there's a couple things that we did. First of all, we have a very, very fun club. We always have something fun going on during the meeting. Someone comes up with something, uh, an, an idea. 
but we opened it up to other clubs. We had several from other countries join us and we would introduce that person and they would give us a little bit about their club. So it, it was an interesting um, assignment, I guess, that people would ask them questions and listen to their answers. And then maybe another person would ask another question about them. Uh, but we had, um, we had phone calls. I mean, there are several people that couldn't get on the computer. They didn't have camera. So we'd open up a phone line and they would get on and, 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 and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very uh, interested in, in listening and we would include them. Um, we just, we went every week, which was wonderful. It, we did not, at the beginning, everyone was trying to decide should we meet or not? Should we cancel the meeting? Should we put it on hold? And we all said, if we do that, we will never meet again. So we had a great group of people that said, we'll be there. There were times that others, some couldn't make it because of other meetings and stuff, but we had a great core group, uh, as was said by Laura. Uh, it, it was just a lot of fun. We had a great, great time. Thank you so much, Maureen. I saw Becky, you had your hand up and Laura, you had your hand up also. Becky, did you have anything else that you wanted to say? I think the big thing that you all are hearing from the three panelists on this question is quality. Fun, quality, and making the meeting count. And we hear a lot of words a lot of times about club quality, and we let it go in one ear and out the other because we think we're giving a quality meeting to everyone. But when you give quality enough that will have people come back or that makes them get engaged into a meeting that you would not normally see, that's what you're seeing from all three of us. It's a central vein of fun, quality meetings that it takes a lot of work behind the scenes to get that together and keep it going. It does, I agree. Laura, did you want to add something else? Actually, I was just applauding uh, what they were saying because I just it resonated with me so much. That core group of people committed to bring the fun, and uh, yeah, so so really that was it. Very good. Thank you so much, Laura. Dean had a question. How do you increase the connectivity of the club? Dean, did you want to unmute yourself and give a little bit of context behind that question? I cannot hear you. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, how does the club reach out and connect? Can't can't hear you very well, Dean. People, how? Isn't he supposed you, to be answering a question about connectivity? Yeah, how do you increase the connectivity <laughs> of the club? And I, I cannot hear Dean very well. What, Reader audience. What's really confusing me is it, it shows him speaking, but Zoom says he's muted. I don't know if that's, that's right. So it's like he's half muted. Every other second is muted. Well, let's move ahead, Kristen, and then we'll come back to Dean. Absolutely. Now we're going to go on to question number two. We only had one participant in question number two. Dory, you were the only participant in this question. Are you ready to answer? No, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dory, question number two, and I'm going to open this up to all panelists also because I want a little bit more conversation around this question. Did you do anything fun or creative to change things up a bit? And I know that we spoke about this a little bit on the first question. And I saw somebody, Becky said our October 28th meeting is going to be themed ghosts and goblins with an interpretive reading evaluations meeting with Teresa Dunbar. Love her fractured table topics. But Dory, please let us know what fun things did you guys do to change things up? Thank you, Kristen. We have had guests come in from other clubs, but from other countries, as well as was mentioned earlier. We had, for our open house, we had Chris Nielsen, 
He is an international speaker and he does interactive meetings. He is a president of his Toastmaster club, but he also works with corporations like Microsoft and various other ones to help their employees to feel more engaged and a little more alive during their meetings. And he showed us quite a few things that were helpful. He also offers those meetings, the interactive meetings to Toastmasters clubs for free. You contact him, let him know about your open house or an event that you're having, and he will be happy to join you if he's able to and take you on an interactive. And he made it a lot of fun. But another thing that we've added is we've added one meeting a month is an educational meeting. Today was our educational meeting and we did evaluations, how to do effective evaluations. And Lynn Blake led that and she did a great job because she showed us ways that you don't want to do your evaluation. She showed us, you know, those who are just overly positive, all they have to say is just great things, great things, great things. But that's not helping the speaker to learn. She also had an evaluator that did nothing but negative. That doesn't help us to learn. And she had another evaluator that was focused solely on themselves and what they could do and, and to different effects. But our educational meetings help new members, they help existing members to revive and rekindle and just to help explain and learn more. And I'm going to do, this was started, excuse me, our, this was started by our previous VPE and she had to drop out. Now that I am the VPE, I am going to be continuing this process and I think it's a great process. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dory. I like that. I remember when I was a member of Toastmasters Club back in Texas, we always made things fun. I was a member of an advanced Toastmasters Club in District 50, and this club was called Improv Masters. And Improv Masters was always fun. Well, first of all, we ate. That was probably the funnest part. We'd get there, we'd all sit down, we'd all have a dinner together, and then everything was improvised, everything. First thing that we would do is we would draw numbers on who was gonna speak first, who's gonna speak second, who's gonna speak third. And then the Toastmaster of the day would come up with the speech topic. And these people that were going to speak, all advanced Toastmasters, while well, we were at the time, had to go off into a separate room and have five minutes to create a five to seven minute speech. Now, we were working on the CC and the CL manual. For those who don't know what that is, that was the old legacy program. Sometimes somebody would get on the CC, the competent communicator speech number 10, and they would have to speak for eight to 10 minutes on persuading their audience. Well, that was a lot of fun. So you had to, you had to pick which speech you were going to do out of the hat. Then you had to pick the title. Then you had five minutes while we were doing table topics. And that was a lot of fun. And sometimes Becky was talking about fractured table topics. I love that. I was in the Mentor Monday meeting with Teresa when she was going over what fractured table topics were. We, did, we didn't do something like that, but in some of our meetings we did. We would have table topics and we made things fun by having everybody stand around a circle. You can't obviously do that with Zoom, but ask the first person a question and then have them start telling a story for one to two minutes and then have the next person keep on going with that story using the word of the day or the theme of the day. And we would go all around and everybody would do that. And it was a lot of fun. Sometimes in our table topics, we would have a little picture. So we would be given this funny looking picture and then you'd have to make a story up on it. I got a picture one time of a man, he was, he had a painted, his face was painted black, his lips were painted white, but he had all this ornate stuff and he looked like somebody 
who was in a Mardi Gras parade. So I took this picture and I told this wonderful story about how I met my husband, who was this man down there in New Orleans. And as he went by on the float, he threw me some beads and I lifted my shirt. I mean, it was really, okay, it was improv and it was not politically correct, but it was so much fun. And just, you just gotta make things fun. Thank you, Dory. Thank you, Becky, for also talking a little bit more about what the fractured table topics are. Okay, question number three. This is going to be answered by Sonia Van Hook with Wolf Hills. Sonia, what methods does your team employ to set and track goals? What does the leadership do to communicate and track the goals within the whole club? And kind of to caveat this question before you answer, since we've gone on Zoom, I think that I've seen it's been a little bit more difficult for the Vice President of Education to sort of track those goals and to upload that with pathways. We are going to have a pathway session right after this, and we are going to talk about that. But I've seen it's been a little bit more difficult with people now that we've been on Zoom and now that we're meeting all on, most of us are meeting online and not in person, it's a little bit more difficult. So Sonia, what methods does your team employ? Thank you so much for asking me that question. As VPE, I was preparing for a fall themed meeting and I looked around my office and I saw three little plastic pumpkins that were filled with candy. And I'm thinking, I have got to get rid of that candy because if I don't, I'm going to eat it. I mean, eat all of it. So I packed up those three little pumpkins and I took them to that fall meeting and I presented them to speaker number one, speaker number two, and the table topics master. Ever since that meeting, that was four years ago, we have had some way to recognize the speakers. Sometimes it went along with the theme. Sometimes it was just something in my office I was trying to get rid of, but we have recognized our speaker in some way. And when a speaker completes a level, of course, they get a certificate and we take their picture and we post it on our Facebook page. Now, be sure you have the photo release on file so that you can be sure that you're allowed to post that picture. But if you go to Wolf Hill's Facebook page, you will see our members and you can follow us as we reach those goals. You'll see pictures of us standing there with our little certificates and we try to move it around the room so it's not always at the same place, but it's usually beside of our banner, which that's the picture I have behind me. That's actually our club banner. So you'll see us beside the banner, beside the flag, sometimes beside some place else in the room. But this is how we recognize the goals that we have, have achieved. Now, how do we set those goals? We go to the Toastmasters Distinguished Club Program, and I just did a copy of that particular list, and I put it in an Excel sheet, and then I put names beside every single one of those levels. Who is going to finish level one? Every single club member is on this list. So our names are beside level one, level two, level three. When we have a new member, we add that one. And that's how we set those goals. And that's also how we track those goals and how we recognize those goals. That sheet is on a Google Drive that all of the members have access to. So if it's at 12 o'clock midnight and you can't remember what you're supposed to do to help our club earn distinguished, you can open up that file and you will find your name on there. And that's what we're counting on. When it says four members have to do something and your name is right there, we're counting on each member so that each member knows where they fit into the plan and what their specific goal is and then how we would recognize them when they reach that next level with their beautiful picture on our Facebook page. Kristen? I love that idea, Sonia. That, that was super impressive. As a part of Franklin Toastmasters, while we were still meeting in person, we had, we had little name badges that we would put on the desks, but on the backside of them, and I don't know if we did this in Franklin, I know that, there was, that this was done also in, in Texas, in one of the clubs that I visited, 
all of the educational tracks. And once you did something on a leadership track or educational track, you would either get a dot or you would get a check mark. So you know exactly where you're at on your leadership and on your communications track. That is excellent. Does anybody else in the entire summit have anything else to say or anything else? What have you done to help set and track your goals? Do you do spreadsheets like that? Becky, you've got your hand up. Shannon, you've got your hand up. Yes. Yeah, can I just say something real fast, Kristen? Uh, I was a member of John Grigsby Club when he was the president. And John, can you talk about that punch card that you had created about completing roles in a certain period of time? I can. I thought I had it right here with me. We made That's a card right. similar to what you were talking about, Kristen, to where when you you got a card and for each role there was in the meeting, speaker, evaluator, topics master, everything, you got a little punch card. And at the end of the punch card, you return that in for a gift. Well, guess what happened? COVID happened. We didn't get to finish our plan, but the plan was to take the little punch card and do the same thing you're talking about. Track it visually with your card and you know where you're at and you can show it to everybody else. Here's my card. Here's where I'm at. So uh, it was the thought process of, of tracking that in a visual type of way. I really like that idea. And then when we completed our task and we got the whole card pulled, like we did all the roles, um, which encouraged everybody to do that, you got a sticker, whatever, whatever that sticker was that John had, you got a sticker and you put it on your name card in front of you. So you knew that you had completed those goals. And if you do it again, you get another sticker and it kind of moves along those lines. The way you can do it now, if you wanted to, is create a cool Zoom background with those stickers on it or those achievements on it, and then forward that out to your members. So when they attend the meetings, you know, they've got the, the, the logo on this side that says Toastmaster, and then over here, they've got the sticker that says, I completed the roles. Just an idea, Kristen. Back to you. That's excellent. Thank you, Curtis. And we have, we have three hands raised, so I'm going to go to Becky first. Okay. You track Chris your goals. Well, first of all, as the VPE of the club, I do on the first meeting of the month. And if I can share, I'm going to pull in something really, really super quick. I want to show the, you guys what we do as far as the meeting roles. It's very similar to what uh, they're talking about. We do a full circle award. Now, this is what we do with our full circle award. You get a, you get a coaster after you've met every meeting role, after you've fulfilled that, we keep that on a spreadsheet. every month first meeting and every time you complete one of those full circle awards we give you a coaster they get mailed out to every member now that might not mean a lot to you all but to be honest with you when you recognize someone every time that is a big deal to them that makes them feel a part of that and the toastmasters in our group we make a big deal out of that full circle so that everyone helps with roles because the pathways educational path doesn't have as many things as a role to help the meeting going as the CL method used to. So you've got to get everyone in there so that the speakers can get their roles done. Okay. So if you have any, if you have any questions, just ask me, I don't want to uh, take up all of the meeting. All right, thank you so much, Becky. Jane, you had a an idea on how you track and set goals? Yes, one of the things we do with our members, they have a place card in front of them at every meeting, and when they finish a level, then we have a sticker that says the path they're on and the level that they have finished. So some of them have lots and lots of stickers there, and that really does encourage the other members to be sure they don't have a blank card. I like that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jane. And Shana, you had a you had a comment too? Yes, I just wanted to say, um, A, thank you, Becky, for showing us how you are doing the uh, Full Circle Award virtually because we kind of let that go by the wayside with our virtual meetings because we're still 100% virtual. But 
Um, as the vice president of education for our club, one of the things that I do is that there is a tracker, a spreadsheet for each member in our club. So I go in immediately after our meetings every week and update who spoke, who took roles, have that. And we use the very old fashioned email. We do an email blast every time somebody achieves a pathway, um, a copy of their certificate and a little statement of what they've done goes out to everybody. But it has helped me, it's helped our club in the fact that like just the other day, I had to actually remind somebody, I said, you completed your path. You need to go into pathways <laughs> and actually do the work to show that you've done that now so that I can approve it and give you credit for that. Um, but it's helping them. So they get that email blast. And the other thing I do is I once a month send out the spreadsheets to everybody. Um, it would be really good to put it on, on a Google Drive, but it would... Um, by sending it out to everybody, we simply just have a reinforcement of this is where you are, this is what you actually need to achieve, and this is where our club is. We always do the, the report to show how many of our goals we've met as a club and um, just trying to keep on everybody's mind exactly where we're headed with because we've, we're four years in as being president's distinguished now for consecutive years. So our intent is definitely to keep going. We're you know, aiming for Becky's level of, of president's distinguished clubs. So everybody knows what we need to achieve. There's not any, any question about who can achieve those goals. And um, it goes really fast. It takes me like 10 minutes after a meeting to just update the spreadsheets. So if I try to do it, less often than that, then it gets burdensome and then people don't know what they're doing as much. Thank you so much for that information. That's really good info, very good info for the VPEs who may not know what they need to do to help set and track those goals. Stacy, you also had your hand up. I do, Kristen, and I would actually like to address a question that came up in chat. Actually, two questions. One of them was about how do you get your members engaged when they're not engaged? And another one was what happens if your officers are not engaged? And my answer to that question would be, then you need to lean in. You be the person that steps up and that you're excited and that you're engaged and that you're committed and you want to make your club successful. Your club will feed off of your energy. Your officers will feed off of your energy. And as soon as possible, step into an officer role. There's nothing that prevents you from being an officer. But, but trust me, even as a non-officer, you can drive your club. You can be the one that's committed that your club will feed off of, and that will make it successful because other people will catch that energy and they will want to do it as well. Thank you, Kristen. Very good. Thank you so much for your, your input. Okay, our next question. Oh, and Nick Sager said, that's right, as Daryl said, double down. I mean, really, as leaders, that is, that's super crucial. It's super key. Okay, our next question I really like this question and I do have a little bit of input to put in on this, but I have got Sonia and Steven to answer this question. And this is, what have you done to help recognize your member achievements? Now we talked about that, Becky talked about that with the coasters. That's a, just a phenomenal idea. Polk, I think, and another a couple of other clubs, Franklin Toastmasters did the place cards. Excellent idea. Sonia, with Wolf well, Kids. I answered what that one. Oh, my, yeah, you did. Actually, you did, that. you did we that. We use in your our speech. social media to recognize. And even though we have gone to a hybrid meeting, you may say, well, you can't hand out certificates and meeting. What if they're not there? Well, they can go into their pathway and they can print out their own certificate and send me the picture and then we post it. But I will say our certificates have been increased to the next level because I have one member who has them professionally framed and matted and send, sends me a picture of him holding that professionally framed certificate. So now he's really made the rest of us really up our game when we get our certificates and want to have them shown on our Facebook page. I really you, like Kristen. that. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody should go out there on that Facebook page and see that. That's excellent. Okay, Stephen with Harpeth View, I'd like to hear your take on what you do to help recognize member achievements. So we're trying to be intentional with our recognition, 
we realized last year when we were getting to the end of the year with that we hadn't actually given awards we haven't actually really intentionally celebrated our pathways so when we had our our big hey this is our anniversary and and, and the like type items we sat down and we trued up our pins we trued up our dtms we trued up our tags so now We've got everybody trued up, so everyone received the pin for their levels that they had in Pathways. We made sure that all of our DTMs had the DTM name batches. We made sure that all officers, when we did our officer transition, we also have our name batches, which I should be wearing right now, but I'm not. The And then we are, as Dory spoke, she spoke about how we're doing our education every third Saturday, we're now trying to do educational items just to break up the, the monotoneness of the meeting because structure is good, good, but we're all here to learn. During that time, we're also taking the opportunity to recognize everyone with their pathways to go, hey, such and such is here. We have a tradition that's been in part of the club since beginning of time for the most part that when you do an icebreaker, you get a pack of icebreakers. So we've got that tradition to recognize as well. So we're trying to be more intentional with our recognition in the way that Toastmaster has for us. We've also, as Sergeant of Arms, I have a stock of all the pins that we're going to be using and a couple that we're not so that we can always have one to give and so that they're not on back order when it's time to give them. So yeah, so we're trying to be more intentional. That's that's how we're trying to encourage folks now with our recognition. Um, excellent, excellent. When I first started Toastmasters back in 2016, I, I started back in Texas and I went to this club and the first time that I got up and spoke and did an icebreaker speech and everybody who did the icebreaker speech and this was back on the, the legacy path, we all got a standing ovation. We got a standing ovation after we did our first speech because the club understood that that was a big deal. I mean, when I got up, I was shaking like this, reading a piece of paper about my own life. I was just scared to death and I got a standing ovation. Not only that, but I got a ribbon that said icebreaker speech. Toastmasters has ribbons. They've got ribbons for pretty much everything. When I actually went and visited the first time, of course, I didn't join the first day that I visited, I got a little red ribbon and it was a Toastmasters ribbon. So those were given to us at all the milestones. We got one when we were like half competent communicator and then competent communicator. And then as we went up the levels there. And I think that giving somebody just something really little or showing them some sort of acknowledgement has been and this just made me feel like I was a part of the team, like I was a valued member. And I, and I think that that's what a lot of people are just looking for. They want to be acknowledged. Ed, with Harpeth View, please tell us a little bit about your recognition. I just wanted to uh, comment about Steven's thing. The one thing that we're doing now in terms of the intentionality is that on that education week, the third week, we're recognizing people's path we're recognizing people for accomplishments. So today we recognize different levels. One of the things we do for recognition for icebreakers is to give them a little canister of icebreaker candies, mints. And generally speaking, it's a nice surprise because people don't realize being new members that this is coming at all or could come. It's been a whole lot harder in Zoom to do that. We ended up doing a mailing to send out a flood of <laughs> icebreaker candies uh, at once when, like Stephen said, trying to true up our recognition and getting people to show up when it's time to uh, get the award in person doesn't always work either. So we're still working out the details, but anyway. Well, Ed, I can tell you that today, we've got our award ceremony today, and it was a little bit like herding cats, but I think when people figured out, oh, well, I might get an award, then maybe I will show up. Yeah. But how much, how much money does it cost in time and in postage to print out a certificate for level one, level two, level three, level four, level five, or your HPL or your DTM project? How, how much money does that cost? 
to print it out, have it signed, and then put it in an envelope and mail. Maybe under $10, maybe less than that. And to have somebody get a recognition in the mail. I, I have received recognition from Toastmasters. They've sent me stuff that I was not even expecting, but to open that up and get that recognition was the best feeling in the world. So I would encourage everybody as VPEs and as officers of your clubs, think about what you would like to do to help recognize your members. Because if members don't feel like they're valued, mm, I mean, are they gonna stick around? Maybe, maybe not. Nick said, tracking these things is part of the behind the scenes effort. And Becky mentioned this is our opportunity to be the change. If your club isn't doing some things already, I completely 100% agree. Does anybody else have any comments about how you help recognize member achievements? Anybody else, something that we haven't talked about? I love the icebreaker candy, by the way. <laughs> hey, Kristen, I do wanna bring attention to the best table topics, best speaker, best evaluator ribbons that I put the links in the TI website to. These are PowerPoints that you can download and you can fulfill those for anything that you're giving for those meetings. And that's perfect for online meetings. It's under the online resources meetings on TI's website. So check them out because there's a lot of things in there you can use. That's wonderful. I'd, I'd forgotten about that. I've got so many best speaker ribbons and best table topics, best evaluator, most improved. All of those ribbons are for sale from TI. So you as a bragging club. Now, Kristen. Kristen, you're bragging on your own abilities. I am Just not saying. bragging on my own ability. I can make a quilt yes, out of all the awards. Thank you, I Kristen. can make an entire Thank wall you. out of the whole. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I have some of those. I, I love getting them and people love getting them. Why don't you as a club just order them? Okay, on to the next question. Oh, per two participants raise their hand. Nick yeah, and sorry. Dean. So one, one thing just to encourage with all of these great ideas and opportunities, it's important to keep it small and like you can really easily get overwhelmed with all these changes um, and trying to implement all these changes and you probably don't want to do everything because then you get conflicts i would strongly recommend pick one or two of these things to do and to implement and be consistent it's much better to start small and be consistent with your recognition than just to be haphazard or incidental uh, we, we've had drama in our club um, even before covid where the VPE like gave flowers to somebody for giving an icebreaker speech. And then every other club member is like, well, where's my flowers? <laughs> like, you know, and, and I give, I give my icebreaker this week. Where's, where, where's my recognition and or why do they get flowers and, and these people get icebreaker pucks. It's, it's not, you know, it, it creates all these questions that nobody wants to try to answer. Start small and be consistent. Um, your members do notice it does matter. That's very good. Consistency is definitely key. Did anybody else have their hand up? Okay. If not, we will go on to our next question. Our next question will be answered by Kurt Menser with Thoroughbred Toastmasters. Does your club use the feedback option in pathways to provide tips and encouragement to members. And how has that worked for you? Thank Kurt, you. are you online? Kristen. There you are. Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm here, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm gonna say a couple of things. First of all, in a little while, I'm gonna to talk to you about Pathways and how great it is. And right now I'm gonna tell you about a feature that we don't use. We don't use that feedback feature because in Zoom, the feedback has to be immediate and strong and obvious. Because if you think about it, when you come to Toastmasters, if you just speak, you don't grow. If you come to Toastmasters and that club supports you and gives you feedback, that works. Here are a couple of things we do in Zoom. Oh, and by the way, one of the key things to making all this work Treat Zoom as an opportunity, not a burden. I get to be in five different states in three different clubs because of Zoom. I probably couldn't drive from here to Bowling Green without getting a, a speeding ticket if I was doing 
on in hand thing. So Zoom is an opportunity. Here's here are some of the things we do in Zoom. First, at the end of every speech, we take one minute to type comments, feedback. Every member gets to give feedback to that speaker. Number two, when you have a contest presentation or when you have a short group of people and you don't have a lot of people to give feedback, we let everybody give a short piece of feedback. Feedback, while feedback is critical, but it's only critical if it's here and now. The feature in, in Pathways is great. I think it's more effective when you're in that person-to-person -person thing because that gives you another kind of feedback. And if you think about it, in Zoom, most of the feedback you get is written, all right? And my group feels, my group uses feedback in the meeting as their key way of getting getting feedback to every member. Uh, that happens in Bowling Green, Kentucky at Thoroughbred. That happens at Muskegon, Michigan in Community Toastmaster. It's not that that feature is bad in and of itself, but you think about pathways, it is feature rich. And using those features might be nice, but feedback has to be immediate and focus. And I'm sorry, we don't use it. Thank you very much, Kurt, for that answer. Is there any anybody else, any other Toastmasters club who actually uses that feature in Pathways? Raise your hand if you do. Nobody. Nobody in this room, maybe. Kurt, well, maybe you can talk. Dean, you raised yes, your hand. I think Bert Copeland was saying something. Bert, you want to unmute and talk? I missed what feature are we talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry. It this was is... the feedback. Oh, go ahead, Kristen. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Kurt. It's the feedback feature in Pathways where you can log in, go under somebody's profile, and type it out and be like, great speech today. Really enjoyed the Yeah, point. I've been using it right along. Nobody knows it's there, but I use it anyway. Okay, good. Good. I've, I've been a part of a few clubs that have myself, and it's been nice to go back and look at it. Sometimes the little slips we'd receive or what people would say I'd forget about, but captured online, it's nice to go back and, and look at it, especially from past members, because I kind of jogged your memory. Like, oh, yeah, I remember him. He was, he was a great guy. But uh, I also agree with Kurt. You know, feedback is important when it's quick and immediate. Sometimes you won't leave the meeting and think to go home and type it all out. Just give it to them then or do both. Tell them now, then go home and type it in. So maybe there's a hybrid, a mixture of that. Kristen? Dean, did you have something that you wanted to input? I was just going to mention that the uh, that feature requires the person to actually go and look for it. It does. There's a There's a little bit of maneuvering that you've got to do to get into pathways for that. Kurt, maybe you can talk about that when you talk about pathways. Okay, excellent. Laura, you had a question. I see your hand raised or a comment. Yeah, uh, thank you for the invite, Becky. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm on Becky's um, Toastmasters and I appreciate being here today, but I did have a question on that, Kurt. I really like that idea as a Toastmaster member. Um, just now getting into the pathways. And I just wanted to add that I think that's a great reason because sometimes people that are evaluating your speeches really are not qualified or not a seasoned member, myself included. And I think I would like to hear from more seasoned Toastmasters that are there that heard the speech rather than just the one person that maybe is evaluating your speech. So I think that is a great idea, Kurt. And, um, and, and, and Becky, I'll be the guinea pig on that if you want me to, but uh, I just think that's a great idea. Just a little old me saying, but. Thank you, Laura. We do appreciate that. Curtis, you raised your hand too? Yes, ma'am. I was just going to talk about what Laura had just mentioned about getting feedback from seasoned 
seasoned veterans, not necessarily who's in charge of your evaluation. When I was on my way to get my DTM, I would uh, you know, have this person evaluate me, but then I would also hand my book or my materials to Laura Barker or John Grigsby and say, hey, they're gonna evaluate me for the club. I'd really like your feedback on what I'm doing. So don't be afraid to ask two or three people and say, hey, do you mind if I, I know it's not the official feedback, but do you mind writing this down? And typically people are honored and they'll say, oh, absolutely, I will, no problem. And I've seen a few people give speeches and they have three or four people silently evaluating them on their own, which I think is powerful. So you got the one, you got the check mark, the new person gets the opportunity to evaluate and that's great training for them. And then you have some other people in the background also evaluating you. Just a thought. That's great feedback. Maureen, you had a comment? I did. Um, along with those, those person that said, uh, write feedback in the chat that every member could write feedback in chat. If we don't have a lot of members that particular week, we'll do a round robin. And we do that for our advanced club too. So everyone gets to get on and give a little bit of information as far as what they thought about the speech. So it's called a round robin in our group. Uh, and we do it in, you know, like in person on Zoom rather than in the chat. But I like the chat one because most of the time we have a full schedule. So uh, I like that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Maureen. And anybody can save the chat. If you speak and you're over Zoom, save the chat if somebody's going to give you feedback on it. So you can go back to it later. Okay, our next question is going to be answered by three individuals. We have Ed Zinkowitz. Maureen again, and then Becky Beggerly. And this question right here is what did, and this is really critical, what did your team do to prevent burnout on members who often volunteer for speaking roles? Ed, I would like for you to hop onto that question and let us know what does your team do to prevent burnout to members who often volunteer for speaking and other roles? It doesn't necessarily have to be for speaking. Well, Dory also spoke about both of these things. One is we do special events occasionally so that we don't have speaker, 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 speaker. And the other one is the education program every month where we have somebody focus on how do we pay attention to that detail and not necessarily have volunteer speech assignments. So somebody does the education and gets speakers lined up to do whatever so that we're not making so many demands on or, or have so many opportunities that people feel overwhelmed. And unlike, I'd like to know from Maureen about how they keep uh, roles filled every Saturday. We have that challenge. Thank That's you, it. Ed. And then I will pass that on to Maureen. And Maureen, you can answer Ed's question as well as okay. what does your team do to prevent that burnout on people well, who take roles all the time? Well, first of all, Ed, we, we meet on Wednesdays. Our, our uh, advanced club meets on Saturdays, but our regular club meets on Wednesdays. And we have a VPE like no other. Her name is Wendy Lick and she's Miss Northeast Tennessee Toastmaster. We nicknamed her that. And she is extremely encouraging and gave all of our members the, here's, let's go over your goals. Here's how we're going to achieve those goals. And by having a meeting every week, we were able to get a lot of those goals underway. Um, and we also, the officers of the club, we stepped up to speak if nobody else wouldn't. So it encouraged those people to get up and other people to get up and speak. And we just kept encouraging. We kept giving great feedback or uh, great evaluations. We had, we told them we had a lot of guests and the guests want to hear people make speeches, whether they're good, bad, new, older Toastmasters, show people how they can, show our guests how they can improve, you know, so don't don't be afraid to get up and speak and make mistakes or, or not. And we, we uh, sometimes we'd assign fun topics to people. If somebody couldn't think of a, of, of a speech, we'd, we'd give them a fun topic to, to talk about and look up. Had several uh, that way, but, but it's been, we really have a great group of 
I'm really proud of our Wednesday orders because every one of us are encouraging to the others. So that's that's a big part of it. And Wendy is the top one. And if anyone steals her to their club, I'm going to get you. Thank you so much, Maureen, for your answer. I certainly appreciate it. Laura, I will come to you in a minute, but I would also like to hear Becky talk about with Metroplex motivators, how they prevent burnout with the members who often volunteer for multiple positions and speeches. All right. Uh, one of the things that we do, and I will say that I've done this for the last year or so, is we meet with each one of our new members. Now, this is going to go into a little bit of a different thing. But when we have someone join our club, we have a navigational meeting and we get them a mentor scheduled. And I, as a mentor of the three people that I am mentoring, I specifically sit down with them and get their speeches that they need to complete that first path on the books, get it ready, get it in their head, get it on their calendar. When can you be ready for this? When are you going to give this speech? And I do that so that those speaking slots are taken. They are reserved for them. Now, we have some times that even though we are a seven-year President's Distinguished Clubs, sometimes our speakers aren't ready to give a speech. So we will pull out one of those fun topics and we will do a full table topics meeting and we'll take the load off of everybody. I love that. Thank you, Becky. Laura, you had a comment or a question? There we go. Yeah, uh, I, I was one of those that got burnt out and I, and I left for about a year and I, I came back and I'll tell you why, why, how I came back. Number one, I didn't really, I didn't really complete anything my first year, my first time. And, um, but what made me come back is because Becky personally reached out to me and every week she would send me an email inviting me back, you know, and and it's not necessarily the email as much as the message it, it sent me. It sent me, you matter. It sent me, you can do this. I believe in you. And for her to, to be that persistent, it's like, that's why I'm here today because I want to support her because she supported me. That is you really, know, I'm really exhausted. Wonderful. I'm here today, Becky. <laughs> we are so glad that you're here today. Thank you so much, Becky, for doing that. That personal touch, the emails, the communications, the telephone calls, that may be even more effective than sending a text message or an email. Just that hey, person. Kristen. Yes, Becky. Yeah, let me let me just say this, and I've, I know that you know this. Uh, in mentoring and anybody else that you talk to, you need to understand that as an officer, as a representative of your club, people will connect with you as a person before they're going to connect with you and your Toastmaster message. Understand that and make that personal connection because I've got a, I've got a mentor or a member here that just got up on a Saturday morning because she connected with me and then Toastmasters. So don't take your personal touch with anyone lightly. Because you are in a position where you can motivate others. So make sure you understand that personal connection. I agree. Thank you so much again, Becky. Okay, on to our next question. And we have four people that are going to be answering this question. We've got Shana Teasdale from TGL Toastmasters, Daryl Pace from Franklin, Jane Knight from The Morning Cup, and Laura Barker from Pellissippi. Question, did you continue to meet as many times a month as you did in person? Shana, I would like to open this question up to you. Thank you, Kristen. Yes, we do meet weekly still. As an officer group last year, we had the conversation about dropping it back to every other week. Um, but we really felt like the continuity was important for us. We were concerned about the burnout issue, um, but like everybody spoke about, we try to do a, 
a fun meeting a week. We've done a backwards meeting. We've done, we'll do educational meetings. We'll do, you know, a fun table topics day to take the pressure off people so that it's not so bad. But we, we did decide that continuity was the most important thing for us to keep going. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Daryl, are you online still? Can you speak about Franklin Toastmasters? And did we continue to meet as many times we a month did. as we did in person? Yes, we did, Kristen. And I'm a member of three clubs, the Franklin Toastmasters, the Brentwood Early Risers Toastmasters, and the Brentwood Evening Toastmasters. Each of the clubs has continued to meet as they did or with the same schedule that they did prior to COVID and the, the Zoom thing and the pandemic and all that. I've seen some clubs, this has been a long time ago, but it seems like I have seen a club that went from meeting, say once a week to once every other week or from once every other week to once a month. It seems to hurt the membership. Members lose, uh, I think Shanna, Shanna mentioned continuity. That continuity is important and it keeps members engaged. There have been dozens of fantastic ideas on how to make meetings interesting. I love the stuff that's come, that's, that's been presented so far and using those ideas to make the meetings interesting is what keeps members wanting to come. And real quick, just a very brief, shameless plug for the Brentwood Early Risers Toastmasters. One of the things that they're doing to make things interesting, they have done a backwards meeting, which I saw mentioned in the chat. And then on the 30th of this month, they're going to have two distinguished speakers. One is Darren LaCroix, and Darren is a world champion. He's going to be speaking on how to develop contest ready speeches. The second is Jana Landry. And Jenna is a business development and communication strategist. She's going to be talking about how to use stories to dazzle your listeners. If you can attend, everybody, it would be wonderful if you could attend. I'm going to put a flyer for that in the chat and would love to see you there. Thank you so much, Daryl. Okay, our next panelist. Jane Knight with the Morning Cup. Jane, did the Morning Cup continue to meet as many times a month as you did before COVID shutdown? Yes, we did. And I think that what helped us so much is that when all this COVID stuff started, our executive team and then our members also, we made a decision that we were going to continue, that we weren't going to stop. And so I think that decision, once that decision was made, everything else just fell into place. Some of the things that we did, um, we continued to do recognition. So when someone reached a level, we did a PowerPoint with stars and all kinds of noisemakers online. When we gave them their certificate, we made a big deal out of it online. Our members also continue to invite people to our club. And what is interesting is that our club has grown. We now have 34 members. And so it's, it's just amazing. We have wonderful members in this club, really wonderful members. But part of it, I think, is that our members continue to reach out. Now we're a hybrid meeting. We meet in person, but we also still continue Zoom because we have a member from Uganda and we have also members who cannot attend all the time or cannot get there at 7.30 in the morning because of their job and their online. And it's working. We've had to figure out how to make all of the Zoom stuff work, but Thank goodness we've got people in our club who are very knowledgeable and have helped us with that. Thank you so much, Jane. I am so proud of the Morning Cup for everything that y'all have done and the strength of your club. It's, it's a pretty fabulous club. 
Okay, our last panelist for this question, Laura Barker with Pellissippi. Did your group continue to meet as many times a month as you did before COVID? We did, Kristen. We've been meeting weekly for as long as I've known. And when COVID hit, we, we there wasn't even a question of would we continue to meet weekly. That was just what we did. However, as time went on, it was brought up for discussion, you know, maybe we should consider going to twice a month or, or what have you. And after some discussion, the consensus was, no, we need to continue meeting weekly. And there are a lot of reasons for that. You know, when you go to twice a month, and I know that that works for a lot of clubs, so I'm not criticizing that in any way, but what we felt was, for our members, uh, the ability to have a meeting that they could come to every week gave them more opportunities to participate. Because if you're only meeting a couple of times a month and you miss a meeting, you really start to lose momentum. And so having that weekly opportunity, I think provides a rhythm and, and momentum that is more sustainable than less frequently. We also had uh, new members who have come on and shared with me that one of the reasons they chose our club was because we did meet weekly and that that was important to them because they felt like they would have more an opportunity because we all can't, I think because just our schedules these days, you know, maybe we can't be there every single meeting. So that gives you three more times in the month if you have to miss one, right? So that is why we just kept going, uh, continuing to meet weekly, and that seems to be working out for us. And it sounds like that's pretty much the consensus here in the group as well. So great. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Laura. Anybody else on the President's Distinguished Panel that did not meet as many times after COVID hit? Anybody else? that is a president's distinguished club who cut down on the times that you meet per month? Or did everybody continue? Well, there you go. There's the consensus right there. Maureen, you had your hand up, please. I did. I'd like I to hear wanted, it. I just wanted to add one more thing that several of our members were disappointed when we stopped meeting in person because you didn't have that camaraderie or share your stories of the week or your life a little bit. So we created a second meeting. It was, it was the Tuesday, I forgot what we called it. Um, we've, we've since slowed down on it, but it was a Tuesday social. So if you wanted a glass of wine while you met, if you wanted to have a beer, if you wanted to do whatever, eat dinner, we had that social camaraderie it was a lot of fun and we just opened up and said what we did personally that week, you know, so it was a lot of fun. So that, I, I'm, a lot of people didn't have a lot of Zoom meetings, but they always came to that particular Tuesday. So Wednesday Orators had a Tuesday social. Correct. I like that. <laughs> okay, well, your club actually is meeting more now that the shutdown happened instead of less. And of course, we're seeing that all across the board with all of these presidents, distinguished clubs that they continue on. I really like that. Okay, last question for our panelists are going to be answered by four of our panelists. Maureen with Wednesday Orators, Becky Beggarly with Metroplex, John Grigsby with Pellissippi, and Mary Ann Queen with James K. Polk. So here's the last question for our panelists. How do you encourage current members to participate in meetings that might not join very often. Maureen, I will let you take that question head on. Okay, we have a great group of people that bugged everybody else. Was that? I don't like the word bug, encouraged. But there were several members that, oh, I can't get my computer working. I'm not technically, I'm technically challenged. I don't know how to do Zoom. We kept on, we kept on, we kept encouraging them. We, Virginia Thompson, I don't know if any of you remember her or not, but she's been in Toastmasters for over 30 years. And she was one of them that, oh, I, I just, I don't wanna do this. I, I, I can't, I gotta meet in person. 
we finally got her on halfway through and she has loved it. And we're still uh, encouraging uh, Duffy Weigel. Some of you might remember him. He's the one that doesn't have a camera. So every now and then he joins us on a phone. So we just kept reaching out to them and encouraging them, even if they didn't take a role. They at least joined us and, and we were able to see them, talk to them, whatever. But we had a lot of guests. Everybody kept inviting guests. And it, that was really, really neat. So that we just kept it going. We just uh, kept encouraging people by calling them. Uh, and again, having the Tuesday social helped a lot. Did you find, Maureen, that when you invited the people, when you kept on encouraging, not bugging, mm -hmm. these people to come, that once they started coming back, that they were hooked, that that they started yeah. to actually take on roles and started? Virginia was, and Virginia's always taken on a role. I, after about the third or fourth time, then then she finally took a role. Duffy, we we had a lot, we still have a hard time. Duffy's only been on once or twice. Uh, but they've been the only two that really have not come back on board. So. Excellent. Thank you so much, Maureen. Now I'm going to pass the lectern over to Becky. How do you encourage your current members? And you actually spoke about this just a little bit ago to participate in meetings that might not join very often. We use our full circle award as a motivating factor with a lot of different areas. And I will go through any of those spreadsheets and find something that I know that they needed from before and pick a role out. And I will ask them to come back and do that role specifically. But I will tell you that honestly, from what Laura has given us feedback for what we're doing as a, a member that's come back, it goes back to the influence. If you've got members that are not coming very often, you as a officer or as a focal point in that club, when you make it a point to go to them and tell them they still matter, it doesn't matter if you've been out a while, it's okay, I still know you're there and I still appreciate you and I appreciate and our club needs you. That is the key to make them want to come back. It's all about connections. It's all about uh, motivating and helping someone to feel like they're still important. Thank you, very good, very good information. John Grigsby with Pellissippi. How do you encourage your current members to participate if they have stopped? Well, thank you for the opportunity to participate, Kristen. Uh, first of all, I wanna say that I think we are trying. I don't think we succeed at these very well, but we are trying. And I've got a three part answer to this. So the short answer is pick up the phone and call them, pick up the call phone and specifically call and say, Hey, Curtis, would you care this week to be our topics master? Just that simple personal touch of reaching out, I think is important. So that's the short answer. The long-term answer is build relationships, building relationships and I've told our Toastmasters, said, we'll be in relationship really as long as I breathe, I hope, you know, doing things together, getting in the dirt with each other. You build these relationships, do those things, do the hard things now, right? But building relationships keeps you in the loop to where you can do the short-term things of, hey, Curtis, you care to do this this week? Okay, I've, I've got that relationship built. And it's a long-term goal and it's hard to do. I'm not going to say it's easy. It is hard to build relationships with that many people at one time, but what a goal to have. The third prong answer I've got, this is from Lance Miller. He was the 2005 world championship of speaking. And Lance said, make each meeting an event. Make your meetings an event. It's just not another Toastmasters meeting. We know we got, we got to do, we got to, got to, got to make it an event. And I really took that. I thought, man, that, that's a great idea. I struggle because it's hard on a weekly basis to make another event, but it's, it's worth it. It is so worth it. And last uh, suggestion, I've been holding this for a little, little while. I want to share my last uh, suggestion is I actually want to share from, from Daryl. 
Daryl said, when, when the seasons get tough, we're, we're in a pandemic right now, and this is just for a season. It's a rocky season, but what did Daryl say to do during the rocky times? Double down, double down, right? Build those relationships. Why not? Pick up the phone. I got more time now to pick up the phone and call people. Be creative. Take the time to be creative. Create reasons for people to invite people. Man, create a great, great reason for people to invite people to your meetings. And lastly, build Toastmasters. Double down, build Toastmasters. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you so much, John. Excellent information. Our last panelist is Marianne Queen. Marianne, how did you encourage current members to participate who have sort of fallen off the radar? Yes, good morning. And I wanna thank everyone for their suggestions and their candor. I love practical advice about what works and what doesn't. But how did my club encourage current members to participate in meetings? One day, a newer member shared with us that he could not stand the sound of his own voice. I had never thought about that and wondered if, if others might feel the same way. Later, I was visiting the meeting of another club and I encourage, by the way, visiting other clubs, you help support the club and you might learn something. And that club that I was visiting clearly had an expectation that every person present at the meeting had to say something. Each person's voice had to be heard. And I realized that if at all possible, everyone in each club meeting should say something out loud. No one should remain silent, even if they just respond to a question about how they were doing. So with that in mind, we tried to make a special effort to have everyone speak at each meeting. We had table topics that were a little different at times. And of course we had to plan extra time into the meeting agenda. For instance, one of the things that we tried that was worked out really well was we would ask one question that was simple, innocuous, like, what is your favorite food? And every person had to answer that same question. And it was so much fun. And we also did, uh, oh, and I know Maureen talked about doing a round robin, which I think is that same concept. And Kristen, you talked about doing a story uh, and each person you know one person starts the story once upon a time and then each person continues the story and goes around the room but how do you get people to sign up for meeting agenda roles we in my club tried to take a foundational approach to get members to participate at all to be engaged whether they participate fully in meetings or just uh, meeting their personal goals, trying to work along their pathways path. We tried to do what Becky referred to about having a personal connection. I started off the year last year as club president, as incoming club president by announcing that I wanted to have a short conversation with each member of our club just one-on-one, -on -one, just chat. I wanted to get their ideas about Toastmasters, what they enjoyed, what they didn't enjoy, what they wanted to achieve themselves, and what they wanted to see the club achieve. And with that, armed with that information, I tried to make a special effort to let each member know I appreciated their strengths, I appreciated their talents. I, I sometimes in talking one-on-one -on -one to people, they didn't understand that they didn't see the strength in themselves. They didn't think that they were special in any way. And I wanted them to know that, well, our club thinks they're very special. We want them to participate. And also another thing I did was early on, I met one-on-one, -on -one, of course, with the officers and met with the officers as a group. I wanted to make sure that they understood, each officer understood what the responsibilities were and what each other's responsibilities were. And I definitely agree with what um, Stacy and Kristen said earlier about 
leaning in as a leader, encouraging officers. But I also tried to practice what is called a servant leadership. I tried to emphasize that I really, really appreciated our volunteers and I was there to support them. And one way to support the officers was to encourage them to keep working on their own Toastmasters journey to, to you know, not only fulfill their officer duties, which can be overwhelming at times, but to encourage them to keep doing speeches, to keep filling roles, to reach levels and complete their paths. And I, I will say one of the things, one of the things I wrote down, Shana, you're at your TGL club where you talk about doing an email blast to everyone when they reach a level where I love that idea. We should all celebrate together. And in sum, Toastmasters is about communication. When people feel like they're being heard and encouraged to achieve something, whether it's something that they're going to achieve personally or just to help the club. It makes for a much more enriching experience for everyone and helps the club exponentially. Thank you so much, Marianne, for wrapping that up. This is the end of our President's Roundtable discussion. I hope everybody got some really good information from this. If you have any questions, I believe you know who the panelists are. You can reach out in the chat to the panelists directly or send something in the chat. With that, I'm going to hand this right back over to Curtis. Thank you very much, Kristen. Big round of applause for Kristen and all of our speakers. I really appreciate all that good stuff. Uh, great information. I saw a lot of people taking notes, as did I. Uh, I love the round tables because you hear what people are doing in other cities and you have conversations that you typically would not have, which is fantastic. This is going to wrap up the first part of our meeting uh, of our awesome summit. We heard from Daryl Pace. Uh, fantastic speech, Daryl. I'm putting Daryl's email address in the chat. If you have more questions for Daryl, if you're looking for a speaker for your organization, email Daryl. He's always willing to uh, step up. Again, great roundtable discussions. I'm glad we did that. I took a lot of notes. We're going to go on a quick short break. We're going to get off for a Our next phase in the summit is going to be a reintroduction, reinduction of new Toastmasters. We have onboarded a lot of new Toastmasters over the past year or so, and um, we wanted to make that a little bit more pomp and circumstance. And Ahmad, I don't want to step on your words, so help me welcome Ahmad Gilliam. He is going to uh, help us with our reinduction of Toastmasters. Ahmad, take it away. Thank you, Curtis, for that warm introduction fellow Toastmasters guests and especially any new members that have signed up with Toastmasters from January of 2022 now I will ask you first please raise your hand in the chat with the raise hand feature so that you get popped up to the top of the list because I would like to have you recognized before we get started and as well I'm going to make a comment that I'm currently the division F director, as well as the club extension chair. So me and my dean and myself, as well as other team members, have been working with the newer clubs that have popped up with 20 members to get started, to go ahead and create and charter their club. So I'm hoping that this list of new members next year will be bigger than what we've got this year. So. I wanted to go ahead and just put that out there. And then while we're waiting for everyone to do that, Ahmad, just so all of our fellow Toastmasters know, on the bottom of the bar, of the, the bar at the bottom of the screen, it says security participants chat and then reactions. If you click on reactions, your first choice right up from that, it says raise hand. And if you click on raise hand there, just like I did, you're moving out of the top of the screen so we can see you. So if you're looking to be part of this, Reinduction, please follow those steps. Thank you, Curtis, for that. Yes, sir. All right, we'll give it just another couple more seconds for anybody else that wants to raise their hand. So what I'm going to do with this ceremony while we're doing that for a couple seconds is the ceremony is 
to be done as far as a response from the audience as the ceremony is being done. Now, since we're all on Zoom, my thought was is that so that you don't have delayed responses from everyone, we'll just have the response be either a raise hands or you can just say the response and just do that part of it so that we don't have that delayed response. So I've tailored it a little bit different than the regular induction ceremony, but I think you will appreciate the way it's laid out. Okay, so I know we've got Leah uh, S. Harris, as well as Katrina and then Fioko. So I know that you're the ones that raise your hands, but if there's anybody else, you're included in this as well. And we have a list. So what I'll do is I'm gonna send out the certificates to each one of the new members after the induction ceremony. Fellow Toastmasters, it is now my duty to elect or my duty and privilege to induct these members into Toastmasters for District 63. This is an important occasion for both these new members and our clubs in our district. These individuals have come to Toastmasters seeking improvement in their communication and leadership and we now have an opportunity to help them grow, achieve, and as well as learn. As Toastmasters, you, the new members, are joining a worldwide organization that has come more than 4 million people to learn to communicate more effectively. As members of District 63, you will benefit from a proven program of self-development, you will become an outstanding group of people who are dedicated to helping one another in spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Membership in this district and in your clubs and in Toastmasters International is not only a, it's a privilege that carries with it many rewards, yet it places certain obligations upon you. We are a group of people brought together to do things we could not accomplish alone. Our collective obligation is to grow and improve ourselves and share knowledge and expertise with fellow members in a spirit of enjoyment and encouragement. This means that you will, must do the following six things. One, attend member meetings regularly and prepare fully for each assignment. Two, apply yourself to the requirements outlined in the Toastmasters educational program. Three, regularly and fully participate in any club activities. Four, evaluate others in a positive and constructive manner. Five, build open and friendly relationships with all fellow members. And six, bringing in new members into the club so that they can also gain the full benefit of Toastmasters. So to the membership of District 63 that are current members of Toastmasters, I say you this, we the members of District 63 help to pledge and support you as our new members in the quest for self-development. We're going to provide you with positive and helpful evaluations, also to help maintain a friendly and supportive atmosphere to give you as well opportunities to help others. And lastly, to help make your Toastmasters membership a rewarding and fulfill, fulfilling 
experience. That's what this induction ceremony is for, is we want to induct you, new members, into the family of Toastmasters that we are all in. I formally announce that you are inducted officially members of Toastmasters for District 63. <laughs> hopefully this will not be the last time that we do this and hopefully the membership will continue to grow and that we can recognize more and more new members every single year. But we wanted to go ahead and share this with you all to go ahead and get this tradition started for the subsequent next years in the future. I will turn control back over to our MC, Curtis Johnson. Our next phase of our summit, Kristen Phillips is gonna talk about the Toastmasters structure just so we all know what the org chart looks like, who reports to who, and how we can uh, support others and who to talk to in case we have uh, concerns or coaching or accolades we wanna pass forward. So I'll pass it over to my friend, Kristen, take it away. Thank you, Curtis. Bert, I Welcome. saw your face. That was awesome. <laughs> that was an awesome face. Congratulations, all new members or members that have been part of Toastmasters since 2020. We wanted to do this, especially because of what happened last year and all the shutdown and things have just been so kind of wonky in the past year. When I joined Toastmasters in 2016, I had no idea what the structure looked like in Toastmasters. I didn't even know that there was anything outside of our club level. But for all of you new members, if you don't know, Toastmasters is a worldwide organization and it is set up as a nonprofit 501c3 here in the United States. However, it is all over the world. We had at one point in time over 350,000 members in Toastmasters. I don't know how many Toastmasters we have as of today, but that number is quite high. When I joined, I had no idea what an area director was. I didn't even know what a division or a district was. So I'm gonna go over this very, very briefly so you can kind of understand what the structure of Toastmasters is. You are a Toastmasters member. You are a Toastmasters member of a Toastmasters club. This club has seven officers. You have the president of the club, the vice president of education, the vice president of membership, vice president of PR. You have the secretary, the treasurer, and the sergeant at arms. All of these people here are to help you and your journey and your development and growth within Toastmasters. Now, each one of these clubs is in what's called an area. An area has between, anywhere between three and six clubs, and this area has got an area director. So there's actually an area director that assists with helping your club with its growth and its membership and its executive committee. Now your area is actually within a division. And each division that we have here in District 63 has anywhere between three and six or three and seven areas. And the each division director, Ahmad is one of them, oversees the areas in his division. And what he does is he assists with the division contest and he assists with training. Above and beyond that, you're also a member of a district. We are actually district number 63. There's well over 100 districts in the world. We're district 63. We span all the way from Clarksville, Tennessee, all the way east of Kingsport, some a little bit in North Carolina and Virginia, and a whole bunch, about half of Kentucky. We are district 63. There is an executive committee in District 63. You have what's called the Senior Three or the Trio, if you've heard that before. You've got the Club Growth Director. This year is Dean Phillips. Dean helps with all the marketing and starting new clubs. You have the Program Quality Director who assists with training and the Spring Conference, TLIs, and that's me. Then you have the District Director. The District Director is the Executive Director over the entire district and that is Maddie Foster. 
We also have a PR person. We have a finance person. We have an admin person. And we have also the past district director. Finance is Jason Cook. The admin is Michael Tolan. Sonia Van Hook is our PR. And then Stacy Thomas is our past immediate district director. Now above District 63, we're all put into regions. We are actually in region six and region six has five districts included in it. And there are two region advisors who assist with all of the region's activities. They assist with helping us as the executive committee with learning and development and training. And as a trio, we go to training twice a year. And then above that, above that level, you've got international directors. We actually have a couple here in our district who are past international directors. And these international directors help out with the decision-making process. They're like on the board of directors for Toastmasters International. Then even above that, you've got a second vice president, a first vice president, the president elect, and then the actual president of Toastmasters. That being said, there's a lot of hierarchy within Toastmasters. And at every single level in Toastmasters, whether or not you're at the club level or the region level, or maybe even the international director level, you have training that's available to you. There is so much more to Toastmasters than just the club level and just the individual member level. If you wanted to step up, there's always training available. There's always an open door policy. There is loads of information on the Toastmasters website on how we're structured. Again, when I started Toastmasters in 2016, I had no idea what was what. And I didn't even know what an area director was until probably a good year after I joined Toastmasters. And then I was like, oh, oh, a district director? What is that? I mean, again, I had no clue. I hope that this just little tiny introduction kind of gives you a little bit more information on the structure of Toastmasters and how we're actually set up. Again, at each level, if you decide to, that you want to become an officer, reach out to your current officers and let them know, I think I'd like to run next year for an officer, for an officer position, and then shadow that person. Maybe next year you're gonna to wanna to become an area director. Reach out to us because we would like to definitely talk to you about that. Lastly, I wanted to talk to you about what happens at international conference. As you know, Daryl Pace made it into the top eight world championship of public speaking, beating out 30,000 other people. So proud of him. He went to the international conference. In the last two years, this has been held, this has been held virtual. It should have been held in Paris a couple of years ago and then last year but it wasn't because of all the shutdowns. Next year, 2022, International Conference is going to be a hybrid conference and it's gonna be located in Nashville, Tennessee. We are going to have the World Championship of Public Speaking Contest here in Nashville and District 63, that's a part of Nashville. We are gonna be spotlighted as the host district. So really think about it step up next year. We would love to have you as a part of the international conference and as a part of Toastmasters. This is very, very exciting time in Toastmasters for District 63 and for Nashville. With that, now that I've talked about the structure of Toastmasters, if you had any questions, please put it in the chat and we'll definitely chat about it. I am going to turn the lecture over to Kurt Menser. He is going to be talking today about pathways, how to get set up on pathways and make sure that you understand exactly what pathways is all about in getting your educational goals and leadership goals up to getting your distinguished Toastmaster. With that, Kurt. Thank you, Kristen. Fellow Toastmasters, let me share my screen with you. And let me get my program up. And nah, just a second. I'm in the wrong world. There we go. Technology. We're going to talk about pathways. And for new members, this is challenging. For 
current members, it's sometimes challenging. And there's a, there's a reason for that. I'm going to get there in a minute. But let me first start with something. If you're in a group of four, a foursome at a golf course, four people having lunch at a restaurant, or a four people singing at church, three of those people have glossophobia. Glossophobia is the fear of public speaking. Think about that. Now, when someone joins Toastmasters, that doesn't go away. The second meeting you go to, you're not, okay, I'm good. No more glossophobia. That stays. And even more importantly, when you start throwing programs and processes at people, they are afraid not only of speaking, but they're afraid of messing up when they try to dig into some of these things. So what we do, and I'm not an expert, okay? I joined Toastmasters in 1986, but I've only been a member for 14 years. So there's a big gap in there. I'm not an expert. I just have some things that I've done that have helped people. So in the beginning, we want people to understand what's going on and we want them to understand how to operate so that it works for them. And this presentation that I'm about to share with you is a part of what I share with new members in a new member orientation. We talk about some other things, but this is a pathways piece. And I do this about once a month and thanks to Zoom, I have people from all over the country who come and listen to this. So that's why I'm a Zoom fan. I get people to listen to me. You come to Toastmasters probably because of glossophobia, which means that if you want to get rid of the glossophobia, you have to build your skills as an accomplished public speaker. Well, we have a path in Toastmasters that does just that. It's called Presentation Mastery. But we also have a bunch of other paths. And when people first look at this, they go, oh, my Lord all of these different things that you're doing, what can I do? How? These are not different things. They're different areas of focus. So that as you look at this, you go, okay, this is doing something to help me learn to speak and to focus on some specific area. So I'm a brand new person and you tell me this. And then I say, okay, so what am I supposed to do? Well, we tell them each pathway has five levels. And in each pathway, the first two levels are identical. The next levels are kind of related, but they focus on that area of focus that is in that pathway. And then I tell people, there's no obvious path for pathways. Pathways is a content-rich, feature-rich product. It's incredible. But to a new member, it's not immediately understandable. You can't say to a new member, okay, front page of the Toastmasters International website, Pathways, click on Pathways, you're good. Because getting through Pathways is not intuitive at all. So. Here's what I do. Here's what we do in our club. There are a couple of things that we teach people to do right away that are very, very basic and very, very simple. Now, your club may do things differently, and that's okay, because this is just one way to do these two things. There's more than one way in pathways, and that's part of the reason people get confused. But we want people to pick a pathway, and once they've picked it, we want them to learn how to work in it. That's done. You're good. Okay. Pick a pathway. There are... I, what I'm showing you here is a step-by-step -step manual that I developed to help people go through this thing, because the truth is, you listen to me. You go home for a day and you reach for your computer, it doesn't come back. So we have this so that people can open the book and go, okay, 
What he said was, on the front page of the Toastmasters website, click on Pathways, click on Start Page. Ooh, I can do that. And there are two ways to choose a pathway. There are actually three, but I'm going to talk about them in a minute. The first way to choose a pathway is to look at all those different pathways and read some stuff and say, that's what I want to do. The second way to choose a pathway is to take a survey. And in this, in, in the pathways world, you should always select digital resources. We tell that to people, even people as old as me, because the printed material costs you $25 extra. And inside the pathways digital resources are all the printed materials that are in the printed materials, but you can print them yourself. So you don't need the printed materials, they're already there. So I click select digital resources. The first way to choose a pathway is to view the path options, click continue, and you get something that looks like this. Now, this is just three pathways. I didn't have room to put them all in here. But as you can see, there are all kind there's all kinds of information about that path and even more if you want to click view all projects in this path you'll see everything if you're a new member i do not suggest that this is the one description you hear you have here is probably enough for you to digest to figure out what this pathway is about so you can read that and if you want to click select dynamic leadership you click on that and You've got a pathway choice. Now, if you came into your club with no other idea than I want to learn how to speak, I want to be more effective communicator, then perhaps you should take the online assessment. The online assessment, the beautiful thing about the online assessment is it's personal and it's easy. So if I'm going to do the assessment, I click take assessment, then I click continue. And we begin and this assessment thing pops up and it asks you to click three things that kind of make sense to you that drew you into Toastmasters, what you might be interested in learning about, and then click next. This, whoa, I click next too fast. What happens after that is a window pops up, it asks you a question, you answer the question, it asks, it asks you another question based on the, the answer to the question that you just gave. So this becomes personalized. Now it's not perfect, but it's personalized. What it, what it attempts to do and what it does pretty well is pull out your reason for journey, joining Toastmasters and point you towards a path. Pretty simple, but it works. At the end of that process, you get one or two paths that are recommended. And even though they're recommended, you can still click on that plus down there and learn more about the path. But at the end, you've got to pick one. And once you pick one, that's yours. Okay, I got that thing done. Uh, and I'm going to say something, especially to new members. None of this is cast in stone. What I found out, okay, wasn't in 1986, because back in 1986, uh, we had paper. But what I found out when I got into Pathways was, after you do a pathway for a while, it begins to get refined. And then you may say, that isn't exactly what I wanted to do. Well, if you got $20 in your pocket, you can get another pathway. Sometimes that's the best $20 you ever, ever invest. So here I am again with my little numbers and things. And if, if you want this manual, I'll put my email in the chat. And if you want the manual, I, I don't charge anything for it. Nothing. It's free. And it will help you remember what I said. Well, the important things that I said, the peripheral things that I said, you don't want to remember anyway. Anyhow, uh, we go to the Toastmasters homepage, and then we go to Basecamp. 
you click on go to base camp and you get another thing that says click on go to base camp it also says if you if you click down far enough it also says that somebody could recommend a path for you please don't do that nobody knows you well enough if you're a new member to really judge what's good for you only you know and you can put that in that questionnaire if somebody else chooses a pathway for you chances are it's what they think you need based on two minutes of conversation right. so now we're going to base camp okay this is the most important page in base camp because it's got all of your basic information here and there's a bunch of stuff that you can do the stuff that we're most interested in today or as a beginner is i want to get to my pathway and, and i want to do some work all right so there while you see a bunch of things on this screen what you do is click path paths and learning and that opens the bottom page here and you can have more than one path as i said some people have two some people have three that would be me anyway we're going to focus on presentation mastery and we're going to click open curriculum this is the open curriculum for presentation mastery level two and as you can see over on the left hand side level two is highlighted now i could have shown you level one but that is already completed and i'm going to look at something that was open so today this is your choice and we're going to pick understanding your communication style as you can see it says no due date you're in charge of all all right so now we hit the launch and i call this the information library for a project there are there's a lot of information in here and your job is not to become an expert in pathways information your job is to become an expert in choosing the information that helps you do your project. In the beginning, you're probably not able to do that on your own. So you get with your mentor and the mentor, if the mentor knows pathways, can probably talk you through that. The important thing is you wanna, you wanna find the stuff that will help you complete your project. And most of the time, especially in level one and two, the project, is a speech and a speech is what helps you with glossophobia and so does the feedback from people so you want to build your speech so there are two ways to go around this thing you can click on the arrows on the left and right or down at the bottom of every page it says select to move to another section and if you click on that you can see all the sections well now there it helps and what what i suggest to new toastmasters is the first thing you do is print this project checklist i said print didn't I? it's an old guy's way to think yeah, you can read it and probably people from millennia on up would rather read it but print it because what that does is gives you an overview of the assignment of the whole project and the scope of it because if you were just sitting there reading all the information in this information library, you might not realize that the discover your communication style questionnaire is critical to finishing this project. But if you look at this paper, you see it right there at the top. It says complete the discover your communication style questionnaire. That's that's critical. So in every project this summary sheet will tell you all the critical things that you need so now if you are like me or like any beginner who goes okay i'm a little confused here if you go to the your evaluation page on the select and move to another section screen click on that you have the opportunity to print your project 
And when you print your project, for instance, understanding your communication style has a 19 page manual that you can print. And it's got most of the material in the information library, not all of it, because some of the information in Pathways is digital. Some videos, some quizzes, those kinds of things. But you got the very basic thing. You got 19 pages of information that will really, really help. Now, you can also print the evaluation as a separate piece of paper, but the evaluation is also in the manual. So if you're not digitally inclined, you can do that. And you can do it for every project in every section, in every Toastmaster or in every Pathways project, period. It's there for you. One of the challenges of Pathways is getting credit for what you do, okay? If you do a project, you finish the project, you go, okay, work for me. I'm going on to the next project. Pathways doesn't understand that. The only way Pathways can record your completion of that project is you do two things. You do the assessor skills quiz beforehand, and you do the assessor, you know, you do that same thing in the after part. There's a assessor skills before, and there's an assessor skills after. You have to complete that. Once you do that, Pathways turns on a switch that said, you finished this project. That's the only way that Pathways knows how to do that. We tried to teach it to do another way, but uh -uh, this is the way it can work. Uh, people say to me sometimes, uh, I don't want, I don't want people to under, I don't want people to have this information. I don't want them to know this. If I want them to know it, I tell them. Here's the deal. Nobody ever sees it. Pathways sees it. Your, your vice president of education or your president or your mentor, nobody sees it except you and Pathways. So, and when when I talk to new members, I always hear a sigh of relief because they go, I'm, I'm not comfortable sharing that information just yet. I still have lots of folks. Getting done is very, very, very satisfying. And if, you, if you're from the old school, see, I was from the old school. You tend to not say that. You tend to say, well, it's okay, but I remember competent communicator in a little book, and only had 40 pages for 10 speeches, and I'm happy. If you're a Toastmaster in today's world, and if you're any kind of leader at all, this is tremendous. And it is tremendous, but you may not think so, but don't you dare tell somebody who's new that it's not. This is life, and it's fun. Once you get people to go through the basics, it's fun. Now, there are hundreds of other features and hundreds of other pieces of information inside Pathways. That's good. But if I'm a new member, all I need to get through pathways and to be, begin to build that confidence and competence is just what I've told you. You walk through it, you work your projects, you get a certificate after you've told pathways you're done. That's the way I teach people to use pathways. If you have any other ideas, I'd be glad to listen to them. All right. I'm going to. Here's what the good Toastmasters don't lose their train of thought, or do they? I don't remember. Anyway, every person's you needs are unique. And I'm going to read some of this. I beg your pardon. I know good PowerPoint people don't read. You need somebody who's experienced in pathways. And by the way, if you have club, club members who aren't experienced in pathways, why? So someone who is more experienced than me 
who can be a mentor or not a mentor. It doesn't matter. We need somebody who understands, who can point out to this new person what they need for their first three projects, what they need for level one. And once you help them under, help the new member understand what they need, you gotta help them understand how to find it. It's in there, but sometimes if you try to digest all of that information at once, there's a great, there's a lot of confusion. And when you get confusion, you get frustration. And when you get frustration, you get people leaving. I think one of the most critical things we can do for new members is this stuff. Because remember, not only was I afraid of speaking, I was afraid of looking stupid in front of my peers. Right? You owe people to do this. All right. Then you have to help them learn to decide how to find the stuff for the future. You got to teach people that they can't wait on you forever. They, you have to learn to do it yourself. And, but your responsibility is to keep that relationship open for at least level one and maybe further. It's, it's as much as they need to help them adapt to pathways. I always say that the first two levels are the key. It's even going to be better key when we have a new level one that's coming out that really focuses on some key skills. But level one and level two, build your Toastmaster speaking skills. After that, we're changing to the area of focus that you decided that you wanted to do when you picked the pathway. And again, I emphasize project credit and get level credit, then things, once you do that, you get reinforced on, okay, I did that. I know because my vice president of education knows and they talk to me and everything works fine. Now, I'm not an expert, okay? But what I do have is I have a set of slides for this presentation. I have a book that has those step-by-step -step clicks and I also have a book full of role description. I'm going to step aside here and talk about something we have done forever in Michigan. Vice presidents of education in Michigan assign every person's role for every meeting for a month at a time. Now, I joined Thoroughbred and they made me vice president of education. And I said, here's an idea. And they said, oh, no, don't do that. I did it anyway. Now they're comfortable because they know, okay, in two weeks, I got to be the joke master. How do I do that? Well, I have a manual that everybody can have that explains all the roles and how to do them and why to do them and when to do them. And then we tell people, okay, if you're going to do a role, number one, read the book. Number two, make a schedule of a meeting so that you can see when that role performed and what they're going to say in that part. And number three, oh, the meeting before, listen to the person who has your role. So that part, that two part thing seems to work for thoroughbred Toastmasters. Also, in the district that Michigan is in, that is a, nobody doesn't do that. It's a common practice. And when I came here, I went, what do I do next week? They said, well, when you get there, you can decide. Well, anyway, let me not digress. Pathways is an important piece of a Toastmasters experience. It's frightening and confusing from the very beginning, but if you lead them through the simple steps that I just gave you, and I have a book that has those simple steps in them, if you lead them through this, what you're going to have is confident, competent speakers. Kristen? Thank you very, very much, Kurt, for your wonderful presentation. I will give the lectern back to Curtis, our MC. Thank you, Kristen. I really appreciate that info, Kurt. That was really good. And you said 
uh, you gave us your email address, mensergroup at gmail.com. So if we want the book and the materials that you shared, we can just email you and you can send it to us? Yes. Very good. Yeah, a lot of good info. I don't know if you were watching the chat, Kurt, while you were talking, but everybody really appreciates the, the very basic walkthrough of pathways. I think we, some of us have the mentality of speaking to the freshman class all the time. Everybody assumes we all know everything and yeah. we all don't, you know? So, um, so it's good. It's good that you did that. And then one thing that I'm gonna do before we move on, I'm not too sure if everybody knows. So I'm gonna put the D63, the District 63 website in the chat. I think I was a Toastmaster for about 18 months before I realized what Kristen was talking about, about the area, the district, the divisions that are within the district and all that. Uh, but that website I put in the chat is the District 63 website. And you can just Google Toastmasters District 63 and this comes up. This shows you uh, leaders, past leaders, awards that your clubs can aspire to win, maps, where our clubs are. It's just a bunch of information. And one of the most important items is the calendar. That's where you can find out, let's just pop over there right now. That's where you can find out uh, what's happening in the district. We post all the events there and other clubs like the Division B Tall Tales um, event is coming, the Division E Combined Area Tall Tales Evaluation Contest. And all the stuff is on Zoom. So if you just want to bathe yourself in Toastmasters like an oatmeal bath, you can do it. And you can get on this calendar and you can just experience Toastmasters in all different kinds of, in all different areas and cities. So uh, it's just a powerful tool that I want to make sure everybody knows that it's there. All right. So uh, according to our agenda, we're going to go on a short break and then come back for the awards ceremony. Uh, My name is Curtis Johnson. I'm the MC of the day. We're moving on to the uh, next segment of our program, which is the District 63 Awards Ceremony. And we're going to talk about club awards, individual awards, district awards, and it's going to be led by the trio from last year, 2020's trio. And remember, as we've been talking, the trio is the top three people that are in charge of our district. So it's the trio. And that is Kristen Phillips, Madi Foster, and Stacy Thomas. So I'm not too sure who the spokesperson is. I'll just go right to Kristen because I've been doing that all day anyway. Stacy or uh, Kristen, take it away, please. Thank you so much, Curtis. This is like the best part of the whole day. I mean, who doesn't love awards, right? I am going to turn this over to Stacy, and then I guess she's going to be turning it back over to me. Yes, we first wanted to say welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for being here and being with us and enjoying this fall summit. It's been absolutely fantastic, Kristen. Great job. And we want to award our, now keep in mind, these awards are for last year. So if you received an award last year, we want to recognize you here today. So thank you for this. We will start off with our Division Area and Club Growth Awards. And to present those, I will introduce Kristen Phillips, who was our club growth director for last year. Kristen. Thank you so much, Stacy. I am super excited about sharing these club awards with you. Stacy. if you will go ahead and go to the first slide. First of all, we've got the Beat the Clock Award. What is the Beat the Clock Award? That award is presented to clubs who added five new dual or reinstated members between May 1st and June 30th of 2020. In Division E, go ahead, Stacy. HCA Artful Articulators added 24 new members and the president was Michael Cannon. Congratulations. There in Division B, Wednesday Orators added seven new members, the club president, Elizabeth Canunda. Congratulations. Division B, Wolf Hills added six members. Club president, Joanna McCroskey, congratulations. In Division F, Thoroughbred Toastmasters, club president, Jerry Steele, congratulations. In Division B, the Morning Cup added five new members. Club president, John Tate, congratulations. Talk Up Toastmasters. So Talk Up Toastmasters Award is presented to clubs, again, who add 
five new members to the roster between February 1st and March 31st. And the award goes to Geodis G3 Gift of Gab. Congratulations, added nine new members. The president at that time was Penelope Perkins. In Division F, Deloitte Dazzlers, Club President Yolanda Bennett added eight new members. Congratulations to Deloitte. And then in Division E, HCA Artful Articulators add, added five new members. The club president was Michael Cannon. Congratulations. Okay, now we're gonna talk about sponsoring new members. I mean, as you know, membership growth is critical to our division and to the club's success. Any Toastmaster who sponsors a new, a reinstated, or a dual member receives a sponsor credit. To sponsor, you must be responsible for the member joining the club, whether that's inviting them or just asking them to join. To receive credit as a sponsor, your name along with the home club number must appear on the member's application. So remember that. If you invite somebody and they decide that they want to be a Toastmaster, have them put your name down there as that sponsoring member. Member name, we're gonna go from lowest, lowest to highest. Member recruited, three members, Anita Monahan, Colleen Plummer, Jennifer Walker, and Regina Jennings. Congratulations for sponsoring three people in the last Toastmasters year. Four people, we had Becky Beggerly and Bert Copeland. Congratulations, Becky and Bert. Five new members, Ruth Livingston. Congratulations. Six members goes to Gary Davis. And then our top sponsor of last year, Todd Rees, who sponsored seven new Toastmasters last year. Okay, now let's talk about the Star Performer Clubs. Now, these Star Performer Clubs, the division directors, if the division reaches distinguished or better for the 2021 Toastmasters year, that there were no distinguished divisions. The area directors, if their area reaches distinguished or better, and the club presidents, if the club receives distinguished or higher. So as you recall, you've got You've got distinguished select and presidents distinguished. So let's talk about area B. Area B, the morning cup, president was John Tate. Congratulations. Pellissippi Club, president Laura Barker. Congratulations. Wednesday Orators, club president was Elizabeth Canunda. Congratulations. And Wolf Hill Toastmasters, club president Joanna McCroskey. We had everybody here on the President's Roundtable. Very super impressed with them. Area C, Chatter Masters, Club President Kendra Ware, and Downtown Dazzlers Club President Kelly McKeithen. For Area D, Division D, Brentwood Early Risers, Club President Brad Vandermullen, Franklin Toastmasters, Club President Charles Albright, and HCA Artful Articulators Club President Michael Cannon. For Division E, Harpeth View Toastmasters, President Mary Dunn, James K. Polk Toastmasters, Club President Mary Ann Clean, Metroplex Motivators, Club President Becky Beggerly, and TGL Club President Melinda Sanders. Area F, Thoroughbred Toastmasters Club President, Jerry Steele. Congratulations to all of the clubs who are star performers this year who made distinguished or above for the 2020-2021 Toastmasters year. Now we had one star performer last year. This was an area director who got an actual distinguished area. Area 52, area director, Dory Nolan. Congratulations, Dory, on having a distinguished area last year.
Now we have a Herman Thompson Award. The Herman Thompson Award is named in honor of past District 62 Governor Herman Thompson, DTM. And this encourages club growth within District 63 by acknowledging efforts by a single club as a whole in three areas. Number one, club atmosphere. Mentoring is evident, attitude of humility, and active and interesting or innovative meetings. District involvement, advanced ad attendance at conferences, and also individuals involved in leadership, and of course, officers being trained. And then beyond club activities, youth leadership, speech craft, and or new club demonstrations or sponsorships. This year's Herman Thompson Award goes to, congratulations, the Morning Cup. Very, very, very well deserved. Thank you, everybody. And this concludes the club level awards. And I'm going to pass this on to Maddie Foster, who was our program quality director last year, who's going to be giving out the individual member education awards. Well, thank you, Madam Program Quality Director. And good afternoon. I am Maddie Foster. And these are the individual member educational awards for 2020-2021 Toastmaster year. The High Performance Leadership Project. This award is given to members who complete a five project program that offers instruction and practice in such vital leadership skills and activities as developing a vision, mission and core values, goal setting and planning, developing strategies, and team building. For 2020, 2021, HPLs were awarded to, from Fountain City, Rochelle Cordova. From Wednesday Orders Club, Wendy Lick. From Harpeth View, Robert Lewis. Again from Harpeth View, Brian DeCure, and from Word Spinners, Andy Burroughs. The Triple Crown is awarded to members who achieve three education awards in a single program year. We had 41 Triple Crown winners. Now, since there are so many individual winners who put in the work this past year, please hold your silent applause until the end. But please share your love in the chat. For 2020, 2021, the following members achieved a triple crown in alphabetical order by last name. Paul Arnold, Ken Baker, Becky Beggerly, Andy Burroughs, Bradley Canada, Rochelle Cordova, Jason Cook, Bert Copeland, Brian DeCur, Ken Elliott, John Grigsby, James Hadley, John Hendricks, Michelle Holden, Christy Kistner, Steve Kowalski, Laura Kraft, Tanya Latham, Heidi Lee, Robert Lewis, Wendy Lick, Charmaine Lingard, Blaine Little, Ralph Mack, Ralston Maloney, Joanna McCroskey, Mary Mixon, Heather Moore, Dory Nolan, Dean Phillips, Mary Ann Queen, Richard Redonnell, Jimmy Roberts, April Romero, Nadia Romanos, Danny Stapp, John Tate, Shanna Teasdale, Amanda Torres, Zach Williams, 
and Ed Zinkowitz. Let's give them all a round of applause. The Distinguished Toastmaster Award is the highest designation bestowed by Toastmasters International. The DTM recognizes a superior level of achievement in both communication and leadership. Members who earn their DTM award will be honored at the Spring Conference in April of 2022. Named in the honor of past District 63 Governor, Erlene Kelso, who emphasized the importance of the education system. This award is presented to the individuals who completed the most educational awards in the Toastmaster year. For the 2020-2021 Toastmaster year, we had a tie. With nine educational awards each, the Erlene Kelso Award goes to Jason Cook and Bert Copeland. I now relinquish control of the awards ceremony over to the immediate past district director and district 63 leadership chair, Stacy Thomas. Thank you, Marty. I appreciate that. And thank you for all the awards so far. Now we arrive at the service awards. So those are folks who have helped us get through the Toastmaster year by serving in leadership and in other roles. Our district, could not operate without its volunteers. You, every one of you who volunteered and stepped up and served in a role as a club officer or a district officer or a committee member, anyone who organizes a, an event or teaches or speaks or recruits or MCs, Curtis, or any of the other events that we have. For the 2020-2021 year, we wanted to, or, to recognize all of you. However, we'd be here for like three days, so we're not going to do that. We've chosen just a couple of folks who really stood out. These are members who every time we said, can you, they said yes, before we even told them what we wanted. They actually stood up and volunteered of their time and their talents. And so we wanted to give them some special recognition for the 2020-2021 Volunteers of the Year, Nick Saver. Nick was punning his way through almost every single event that we had last year. If you have visited any of them, you know this for a fact. And he also served as, a direct, uh, as an area director last year. John Grigsby. John, who's also an area director, was at almost every event last year. He helped with district training, division training, area events, even though we're, they were outside of his area and always with a smile on his face. Bert Copeland, our consummate master of Zoom. Bert was encourage, encouraging hybrid meetings even before COVID. He was online to help us last year, especially with the DTM ceremony at the spring conference. And he also uploaded the spring conference for the last two years for us to enjoy. Jason Cronin, our spring conference chair for last year. Jason did an amazing job. He planned, recruited, and executed a three-day conference all while suffering from COVID himself. And last but not least, Tanya Latham. Tanya performed multiple training sessions for us, all in an effort to help our club and our district to master online advertising. So thank you all to all our volunteers for this year. Area Director of the Year. The Area Director of the Year recognizes one area director whose dedication, commitment, and area team significantly contributed towards achieving the district's mission. The recipient for the award is selected based on club achievements, attendance at executive meetings, communications with the district director, program quality director, and club growth director. The 2020-2021 Area Director of the Year is Ken Elliott. Ken stepped up last year, took over the district, the division when his division director fell ill, he organized, he executed every contest and every training session in Division C. So thank you, Ken. Division Director of the Year. The Division Director of the Year is recognizes one division director whose dedication, commitment, and efforts significantly contributed towards achieving the district's mission. The recipient for this award is based, selected based on area achievements, attendance executive committee meetings, 
the communications from the district director, the 2020-2021 division director of the year is Ahmad Gilliam. The Outstanding Toastmaster Award recognizes members who demonstrate unusual enthusiasm, dedication, and caring for District 63 and its members. The 2020-2021 Outstanding Toastmaster of the Year is Stephen Shainer. Stephen hosted Mentor Mondays every Monday night last year, organizing speakers and speaking slots and actively pursuing educational sessions. He also stepped up to help with the spring conference and voluntarily served as an area director, though he did not receive official Toastmasters credit. Congratulations, Stephen. Toastmaster of the Year. The Toastmaster of the Year Award recognizes one Toastmaster who makes a significant contribution towards the goals and mission of the district. The recipient for the award is selected based on individual educational and recruiting achievements, assistance with club building and publicity efforts, and attendance and support of area division and district meetings. The 2020-2021 Toastmaster of the Year is Dory Nolan. While serving as an area director and achieving distinguished area status, Dory also volunteered for multiple contests and training sessions, both within and outside her, her area. Congratulations to all of the 2020-2021 award recipients. We are proud of all of you. And for all of you who served this year, thank you all. Please give one big round of applause for everyone. I believe I'll now turn it back to you, Curtis. Do I turn the meeting back over to you? Yes, when all else fails, just give me control. There, <laughs> and that is dangerous, I know, but I will do that. Doesn't, it doesn't work with my family or my marriage, so I thought I'd just try it here. See if I could get some respect here. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Well, that's outstanding. You know, recognition is so important. It fuels the success of the organization when we're able to identify the people who have volunteered to step up and uh, apparently there's no money in this, but you step up because you want to better others. And it's just wonderful when we can recognize those and say, hey, great, great job. So we're, you know, we're in a room of amazing people right now. Everyone here contributes. Everybody puts forth the, the best effort they can. You know, a rising tide raises all ships, right? So we're all growing. Everybody's succeeding. We're all growing. It's fantastic. We're going to move on to uh, some District 63 incentives and district business. And I believe my man Madi is handling that. Is that right, sir? Yeah, thanks, Curtis. I appreciate that. No problem, sir. Okay, well, we have, uh, have some incentives for our district this year. As, and it's an incentive just to put in that extra effort. So the first in, first thing I want to go over, I want to go over the the Smedley Award. You know, this has already passed, but I just want to make sure all the clubs are aware of this. You know, if you can add five new dual reinstated members, you'll get an award from Toastmasters International, and it's in a banner that you can hang or present. And when when new members see those banners, you know they get kind of impressed about that. Talk up Toastmasters. This is between February 1st and March 31st. So Toastmasters love to connect. So take advantage of it. Beat the clock. You know, Toastmasters are taught to run meetings on time, finish speeches on time, and reach membership goals on time. So in that spirit, beat the clock is a great motivator for finishing the year on schedule, on time, with record numbers. So add your five members then. So now to the incentives. We're continuing our one and done. Members currently pay dues twice per year, but what if you can make one annual payment per year? So pay, pay once annually allows a member to better plan his or her budget and relieves the hassle of bringing cash or check or to club meetings twice a year. So for the club, the annual membership will be paid in September and ensures your club has its minimum membership requirement for good standing for the full year. We also want to reward our area directors for putting in extra effort. Now at a minimum, area directors 
must visit each club within their area at least twice a year. So the first official visit must be completed by October 30th and November 30th for your submittal. Second visit submittal by May 31st. Now we are challenging District 63 area directors to take a step above that minimum requirement. And we will reward you for that effort. So to qualify for the extra visits, you will be required to send an email to the TRIO stating your visit date and the feedback for the meeting. We will also have an open house incentive. Now there is a monthly drawing for 25 TI dollars or district dollars for clubs who submit photos and agenda. If you submit the information by the third of the month following the open house, the drawing will take place on the 10th of each month. So please send your photos to the District 63 so we can put them on our website. Route 63 award. Help District 63 map out our route to the future. So any individual who supplies a lead that results in a new club that charters between July 1st and June 30th of the current TI year will receive 50 district dollars, which can be redeemed through the district store. The Acorn Award. Invite 25 ind individuals to visit a club. Whether or not the visitor actually comes is irrelevant. Just record their names on the Acorn tally sheet and submit it to Dean Phillips, the club growth director. You will receive a District 63 Acorn pin for each 25 invitees recorded. The SOAR award. You wanna soar above the rest. So complete any 10 of the following 12 goals and win this gold pin bling, a certificate and acknowledgement at a district event. The Super 7. When your club has all seven officers trained in both TLI sessions, you will be entered, you will be receive a set, a complete set of officer pins. And finally, the club coach incentive. Club coaches are experienced Toastmasters who assist in rebuilding club membership and restoring club quality. You want to instill enthusiasm, camaraderie, and structure within this club. Now, we are aware of the extra effort coaches much must put forth as the pandemic continues to impact club meetings and membership growth. If you sign up as a club coach and help a club with their club success plan, have a couple open houses, and gain two members, you will receive 100 district dollars. Now that is a great incentive, I think. And also Toastmasters International is also rewarding you for your efforts. Coaches can also earn the district leader credit in addition to the club support credit if the club coach meets their criteria, which is helping the club become distinguished and achieve, achieve 20 members. But overall, District 63 members are the heart and foundation of Toastmasters. And we want to reward those who make that extra effort. Now, speaking uh, of extra effort, we are looking for volunteers as judges for the upcoming combined tall tales and evaluation contest in our divisions. So please contact our division directors if you would like to serve our members in District 63 in that capacity. Your attendance is needed and appreciated. And also check out the other events in our district. Check out the Metroplex Motivators on October 28th. They're gonna have a Ghost and Goblins themed meeting with interpretive reading. And then also Teresa Dunbar and the Parthenon Club will have fractured table topics. World champion speaker Darren LaCroix, he'll be hosting a workshop on contest speeches. The entire district should attend. This is something that 
is free to us. In 2001, Darren was the number one speaker in the Toastmasters International Competition. And he's the president of the Humor Institute. Darren will share with us how to develop our speeches and to be contest ready. Also presenting will be Jana Landry. She's a business development and communication strategist. So Jenna will be sharing with us how to use stories to impact our speeches and ideas. I know that's on October 30th at 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now, that's early for us, but guess what? It's gonna be really early for Darren. He's on Pacific time. So let's make it worth his effort and go there to support that. Now, I hope everyone is leaving inspired and received some nuggets of information that you can bring back to your clubs. Make sure to copy the chat. Go to those three dots, right click, and save and look it over for the links and information we have discussed today. Thank you for everyone that attended. Now, Kristen is going to close us out, but everyone give yourself a round of applause. Now, let's give Kristen another round of applause for her excellent meeting. We have been called together. So let us go out and be the difference in the change we want to see. I will now return the meeting over to Kristen as she closes us out. Thank you very, very much, Madi, for all of the wonderful and inspirational things that you have said today. Thank you, everybody, for just stepping up. I would like to call out a few names for people that have stepped up to really, really help me out for this meeting. So I really could not have done this meeting without Katrina Allen. Katrina, are you online right now? I'm not sure if you are still online or not. She has helped me out. She's a part of Nissan Toastmasters and she's actually a new Toastmaster to our District 63 and she doesn't even live here anymore. She is helping me out with all of my, uh, just keeping my calendar set. I'd also like to thank all of our helpers today with every single one of the president's distinguished roundtable. They did such a fabulous job. I would like to thank Daryl Pace for spending his Saturday morning talking to us really candidly about becoming one of the top world champions of public speaking. I was so pleased when he said that he would do that. Thank you to Ahmad and to Kurt for helping us with the reinstallation of our new Toastmasters. And I would like to thank the trio from last year. I'd like to thank, special thanks to Stacy Thomas. Without her leadership and guidance, I wouldn't be here today. I really do appreciate her. I appreciate Maudie Foster's leading and guidance. I really am very humbled and very honored to serve with him. And I'm also thankful for serving with Dean Phillips, our club growth director this year, who's doing an absolutely fabulous banner job. I'm sure that I've missed out some people. Nick Sager, thank you so much for stepping up to be the Zoom master. And last but not least, our MC of ceremonies, Curtis Johnston, who did an absolutely fabulous job of emceeing today's summit. And I wanted to, if I could just thank everybody individually, I promise I end up, I will end up thanking everybody personally. Today's summit has been fabulous and had some great information. I hope everybody has been inspired to stick with Toastmasters and to bring new members in and just to keep on going on with your goals. And you know, if you're having a hard time, just reach out because somebody will be there to encourage you, to help you step up, to help just lend an ear and just to listen to you. Thank you for everybody who did so well last year and everybody who stepped up. All of the awards that were given out were 100% deserved by every single recipient from last year. Again, thank you everybody for coming to the Fall Summit this year. I hope everybody has a fabulous rest of your afternoon and have a great day. Thank you so much, everybody. The recording is going to stop.